I just, I think I should just make this the last episode. Hey guys, what's going on? No, I'm just messing with you. Hey guys, welcome to Caliber Corner episode number 89. And today we're going to talk about AK-47s. We're going to give you some solid advice for picking up an AK-47 if you've never had one before. Uh, we're going to hopefully steer you in the right direction for picking one up. So I think we'll just go ahead and get started, let the panel introduce themselves. So on my right, we got Night Strike. Night Strike, you want to plug a channel, say a few words? What's going on, bro? uh yeah check out my channel night strike one on youtube and uh do me a favor if you haven't done so already go to guntube.org and create an account and uh watch some of the great videos there heck yeah man there's lots of good stuff over here if you're if you're thinking about getting into creating content it is a solid place to go to post your content uh again there you're not gonna have to worry about i mean you know obviously as long as you're not breaking law nice right basically is gonna let you put it up on the channel and that's important to remember um good stuff though man you can do your assembly videos over there your reloading videos everybody's welcome do check it out uh you got a little show that you do don't you a little program uh hit or miss tuesday night nine o'clock that's right that's uh, at uh eight o'clock central time right no seven o'clock central time i, I, I don't know i leave that to you yeah. because you're the unofficial seven co-host. seven central the, the center the middle of it all so that's so, so that, that's yeah. why i always miss it well you know i can't help that first <laughs> Because he's the wrong time zone. That's well, it. Foos, that's, that's that's your problem. I think Night Strike needs to go an hour sooner, and then that way it works with us better. You know, it would really help us central time zone people out a little bit more. So. Mm-hmm. Right, yeah. right, yeah. right. Okay. All right, all right, all right. Moving on. Kingpin, David Bowling, what's new in your world, man? How you doing? Uh, not too much, man. Thanks for having me. I always, yeah. uh, always have a good time, so I appreciate it. Mm. So give us a little teaser. What's coming up on the channel? You got anything new coming up? Uh, within the next day or two, I'll have my video on the uh, Henry rifle for the uh, which we'll call it the uh, firearms inventor Creators. playing card yeah. series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, not really too sure what's going to happen after that. How many of those have you, episodes have you done so far of that of the I, firearm creator series, inventor series? Either four or five. I'm not. I'm not too sure. I can't remember. Yeah. Cool, man. Cool. All right. Well, hey, I appreciate you being here, man. I know it's it's evening. It's a big big change for us. It's only the second time we've done this, but uh, I think we're going to have a good time, so I'm glad you're here, man. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Cool. All right. Foose. The Foose is loose. Foose, what is new in your world, man? How's it going? Uh, Going well. Just made another order for 25,000 uh, projectiles, so that's good. Nice. That'll, get me, that'll get me through the rest of my primers that I have, about 8,000 primers left, and... Uh, Still have a bunch of br- uh, brass and uh, powder, but uh, I'm going to have to start shopping around for another 55-gallon barrel of brass mm. next month, okay. I'd say. Oof, man. All so right, so if somebody's looking for your ammunition, ammunition, where can they find it? Where, where can they go through and try some? Uh, Sports Shooters Ammunition uh, LLC on Facebook or Sports Shooters Ammunition uh at gmail.com you get a hold of me it's uh i did have to up the prices it's i had up at twenty dollars uh so it is uh two hundred dollars a uh, a thousand okay um yeah if you're in uh southwest missouri northern arkansas and we could get to a, a shoot or something like that it'll be a uh, bulk price will be cheaper okay cut a few bucks but Cool, cool. It's still great ammunition. It's still a great price. And again, it's an opportunity to uh, you know support somebody that's doing a startup. We're not just giving it to the big business. We're giving it to somebody who's part of the Gun Channel's family. And it's great ammo. I burned through five, well, 450 rounds myself. And I've got another uh, thousand that I need to pick up. And um, no, it's great stuff. Did you move a little bit at um, Wonermaker when you were there, Foos? You yeah. saw a couple a couple boxes? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, a few boxes, uh, 8,300, including yours, 8,300 rounds. Okay. So I moved that along and I was able to um, basically purchase the next 25,000 projectiles. So Good, good. And well, hopefully springtime things will pick up. A lot more people get outside, do some more shooting and start burning through some rounds and put some orders in with you. That's good stuff, man. That, that, that would be that would be nice. But also, you know, I, I've, I've noticed that I haven't shot, been shooting as much. So I need to also burn some rounds. No, I agree. So I, yeah, it's a good time to get out. I mean, especially after the winter that we had, you know, it's not always fun trying to get out there. So Interesting. yeah, I mean, what, here wasn't a bad winter. It was just cold. Yeah. And miserable. Hey, just like Matt. <laughs> and joining us, we've got 
Matt, never enough ammo. So what's going what's on there, Matt? What's new in your world, dude? How you doing? Uh, not much, man. I just I completely forgot. I was I was caught off guard. I keep forgetting you changed your time, which is why I was late. And uh, I just happened to check my email. I was like, oh, shit. so yeah. No, I'm just sitting here uploading a couple videos that I made, and that's about it. I'm not doing much. Well, we're gonna have a little little fun gun chat tonight. Last week we talked about the uh, the ARs and AR pistols, and today we're just gonna. Share some info on AKs for somebody who's in the market for one, buying a first one, upgrading, wants to buy a second, third, or fourth. Just give them some solid advice for picking up a good one. Uh, you know, we've seen a lot of expansion in the market. We've also seen prices going up quite a bit. Uh, but real quick, uh, Forklift, are you with us? Are you out there? <laughs> so the machines are the machines are taking over, unfortunately. And uh, I'm yeah, telling you, man, it's AI. We've yep, known about yep, this for a yep. long time. That's it. Yeah, I wouldn't worry there. about it. I, did, I, so. I wouldn't worry about it all. Right before I uh, jumped on the forklift, I had to go fix a robot because they're stupid and they don't know which way is up and which way is down. You got to kind of sweet talk them a little bit and go, "Okay, here's your here's your X axis. You can run now." So, I hear you, man. I hear you. All right, we well, just be safe. Try not to uh, try not to take anybody out. All right. Yeah, I'll jump back in later. Thanks. All right, no problem, man. No problem. All right, all right, cool. All right, so uh, you know, let's just let's just go right into this uh, real quick. Hey, you know what? I almost forgot to do take attendance here. This is my my feng shui is just totally off right now with us doing this at the end of the day. You know, we've got my my whole time frame is totally off. So joining us, we've got Ed or Ed. Uh, he says today was a good day, even though he didn't have to use his AK. That's always a good day when you don't have to use your AK, but it's fun when you get to use your AK. Midnight Range TM is out there. Mad Sexy Man of the Night. Tahuya P2020, 2020, P229, uh, Bass Boy uh, 99091 in the house. Hooligan Outdoors. Rob D. New York Outcast is with us. And Cadillac Jack, Net Flutter, Alex uh, Says out there, Cowboy Swami, Drusifer Grim 90, Tacos and French Fries, Two Live. We got a lot of people join us today. Um, hello, Matt, sexy man of the night and Tennessee gun guys with us. Always good to have him here. All right. It's good to see everybody join us. Calibers 32 special in the house. And that's probably about it. If I miss anybody, I do apologize. Um, over here on the, uh, gun channel side, we have got David joining us over there. David Bowling. We got paper plane crash in the house. G webs is over there too. Hanging out, chilling on the gun channel side. So, uh, man, starting it up. If you guys could give any practical advice to somebody who's buying that first AK-47, what would you tell them to do? What would you tell them not to do? You guys feel free to chime in. What do you need to know before you? Because we, we've all made mistakes all right. buying guns before. What are what are the for, big for, things you got to watch out for? Yeah. First, yeah. do not listen to Matt. He's the only one that ever got a working one. Do not buy an IO Inc. AK. Or I've, and I've said that many times. I've said that many or times. I got one. the one that worked. The only one in the world that works. Right off the bat. It's not like I went around telling everybody to buy one. I said I got the only <laughs> I, one that worked. I, I know, but you were you were going on a crusade of like how this is the only IO Inc. AK that it, works. It I'm was like, the only fucking one that works. I'm like, mm -hmm. I, I don't believe it. I, I still don't believe it. I owned that thing for years and in fact sold it for a hundred dollars more than I bought it for. So well, that, that, there's <laughs> an upside to that. <laughs> Well, yeah, definitely, definitely. So, um, you know, when it comes to it, just right off the bat, I mean, best piece of advice I could give somebody, and this is just me, if you want something plain, Jane, simple, to the point, you want to just go buy it now and quit watching this episode, just go buy a Wasser. Go get a Century Arms Wasser. Remember, Century imports them. They're not necessarily the manufacturer, complete manufacturer of that gun. You're looking at, like, man, what are they, 620, 700 now for a Wasser? But Yeah, about, about 620, 700, yeah. And, and the thing is, between five and 650, there's a lot of options out there. And I just, I can't seem to want to give in to buy one of those. We got PSA, we've got Riley Defense. I don't know, Blackheart Arms is in that price area either. The Raz 47s are sometimes that price. And again, a yeah. lot of those, you just don't, you don't know. And my, my big mistake was that I bought a Raz 47 uh, early when they first came out. I was totally sold on the hype. It's when I first started watching gun channels. You had a lot of these big channels just saying it's the second coming of the AK. And uh, I bought one and then AK-47 operator union, you know, put his video up saying, hey, Castronians, guys, uh, they're going to wear out the headspace within, you know, a couple thousand rounds. You're already seeing, you know, closing on a no-go gauge. And then I just immediately hard sunk. I thought, wow, I bought something that could be potentially dangerous. 
Um, you know, part of me is like, oh, I'll never shoot two, three, four, five thousand rounds. But then you start going to the range, you burn a couple hundred, hundred rounds every weekend, every other weekend. And I think it left a lot of people, you know, kind of, kind of felt betrayed in a way, you know, really kind of pushed me away from not wanting to go with a former commie block or Eastern block AK-47. So what do you guys think about that? Yeah, I think the RAS 47s are trash. There's new evidence showing that there's issues with the C39 V2s. Although, I think the C39 V2s are still a, a viable option if you're willing to uh, uh, replace the was it the bolt, right? But they're having issues it's, with it's the trunnion. No, it's no, not the C39 uh, V2s don't have a trunnion. Those, yeah. Oh, yeah. that's right. That's right. Those are forged, uh, right? I don't know if it's the bolt or what. They there's, got there's some, a, they got something. Wrong something on it that they're having issues with, but it's replaceable. That being said, you shouldn't have to replace like like a bolt off of a brand new rifle. Um, but I still think there's there's something there. Uh, overall, the gun is is pretty solid, um, but you know, and not everybody's having the issue. It's not like with the RS forty sevens, you know, where these this is just every gun's going to start having these issues. It, the, it, whatever it was, it was something that it was something that's easily fixable, and it's something that's not happening to every rifle. That being said, those are still pretty expensive. I'd love to see those things come down, and then I'd be willing to go buy an old surplus bolt for it off of eBay or something and just swap it out, you know, to have a, to have a, 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 a mill receiver, you know? Yeah. But, but, but that bolt may or may not fit headspace of that rifle. Right. Mm. Gotta, oh. By the way, Jim Burgess is joining us. Jim, what do you have for an AK-47? Don't you have a C-39 V2? I do have a C-39 V2 and I have had zero problems with it, but I frankly don't shoot it a lot. I shoot the shit out of my Wasser. Yeah. Matter of fact, yeah, I'm get out of it this weekend. You have any idea how many rounds you put through your C thirty nine V two? Are you do, are you not running it that much because you're worried you're going to wear it out, or you might you know might I'm, fail a headspace check or what? I'm not running it very much because I'm considering selling it. Ah, okay, okay. So I, mean, I, I, I I don't feel like I can't run it, but okay. So I I, I bought a DDI back when they before they got bought out. Yeah. So I've been running it, and my hammer has been beating the living crap out of the back end of the trunnion. And I was like, "What? Why is that? You know that little that little nipple or whatever on the back of it?" And I was shooting, and I I really didn't realize it. And all suddenly, my bolt while shooting it stuck to the rear. I was like, "What the heck?" Went back and mushroomed that out. I actually got caught in the um, uh, got hung uh, up on it. So, yeah. They're in the back. So I'm like, okay, I knocked the edges off that. I'm like, what's causing that? And I looked at my bolt, my bolt, I'm not my bolt, but my trigger. It's, I think that trigger is way too hard. So I'm, I'm having to grind and, wow. and get some of that hardness out of the trigger pack. So <clears throat> because all these, you know, like these bolt, these guns and stuff that are coming in are usually a different uh, trigger pack is in them, you know, Always watch for difference of difference of hardness in your bolt carriers versus your trigger, and sometimes you may have to take some metal off your trigger to make it softer because that's that metal is supposed to be softer than the bolt or the, the bolt carrier. So is that a lot of the times why we see those bolts getting chewed up because of those Tapco G2 triggers yeah, that they're yeah, putting in there? The, the hammer, hammer is it the hammer itself is harder yeah, than the, the bolt the material? The hammer is harder oh, than the metal of okay. the bolt carrier. And okay. Because that's that's impacting every time, so that 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 little nipple on the back is to help protect the bolt carrier in the back of the firing pin. Yeah. So if that goes wear down that much, your your that means as your bolt starts to come back, the our bolt carrier starts to come back, your actual bolt and firing pin could be hit smacking your hammer again, and that's that's not good. Like I'm thinking about, I've thought about swapping out bolt carriers so I get that nipple back, but also grind the living crap out of that trigger, uh, mm. out of the hammer. By okay. the way, all these problems we're talking about can be solved if uh, if you just buy a pistol instead of a rifle because they come imported, already built, and nobody's touching it over here. Nobody's yes. putting any G2 triggers in any. That Zestaba I've got right there is straight from the fucking factory. Mm-hmm. Period, because it's, it's it's a pistol. It gets in, it, you know. You don't, they don't touch it. it. It gets to come in just as it is. So I don't know about the same bull carrier group. Same. Everything. I mean, nothing, it's nothing straight from everything. piston. Yeah. Wow. It's straight from the Zestaba factory. Yep. Nobody okay. can mess with it because it's a pistol, so it can be imported that way. 
Yep. I think so. Hawaii, same way. They just have to uh, hollow out the magwell when they get it here. Well, no. If they do that, they also have to do nine twenty CR. Yeah, so which means they have to. Twi- that's why they. That's how they end up with a Tapco G two trigger yeah, kit in them. They, they they usually do Tapco G two trigger, swap out the gas piston and magazine muzzle, muzzle device. So they so that means you could put any surplus magazine you want in it. That's true. Yeah. Well, if they if the ATF is or isn't listening, my my Wasser may may or may not be fully nine twenty two R anymore. You know how many I'm, I look. I don't have one because I mean, honestly, I don't have one. But do you know how many <laughs> Ike AKs are out there right now floating around with less than what is it seven or is it nine? Well, if you replace seven it with parts, other right? American made parts, you're not you're not. If you go put like an original commie block trigger pack in it, then technically, and you don't change any other parts to keep the part, the part number up to whatever it's supposed to be at. It, what is it? It's seven, 12? right? It has to have I, thought seven. It was, I thought it was eleven. I don't even know. No, it's not that many. It's, it's like seven. eleven parts. Seven parts. It's ten. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It's ten, no. but 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 the number of parts on the list in an AK, there's not many more than that. So it's. I think you have to replace. Five or something like that. Five or six parts. Well, I think what happens, even even if you have one that's fully nine twenty two R, I'm pretty sure if you throw a uh, import mag in there, you're back under your you're back on the wrong side of your part count. Well, it, it depends because your receiver's one, your barrel's one, your trigger pack is three, and then your uh um. Okay, so here's what it is. Hang on. Here, here's here's the actual rule. Not that it matters. Not that anybody cares. But the actual rule is um, it can have no more than 10 imported parts on it. So that's why on AKs, I think because of the amount of parts, it's less. So it's different per gun. Mm, okay. It's a different yeah. amount of parts per gun. I think so with the AK, it would be how many parts like would that be? Seven. Something like I think it's seven. So because you, you, you've got the grip, the stock, the receiver. The dust cover, the fore end, the barrel, uh, and then four more parts. And then when you take all those out of the equations, that's the ten, the ten main components. Well, the well, bolts. Well, a lot of times the barrels U.S. made, if it came in as parts kits, because that's been chopped. True. So, yeah. It depends so, on so how yeah, how it got imported. Yeah, so so yeah, it would be a U.S. barrel. Yeah. Um, so, so, so that wouldn't count. So then you'd be able to do like the bolt, the bolt carrier, the gas block. Hmm. Front and then, and then one, let, and let me, one let me, more item, and then you everything else would have to be American. Let, let me read off the email I got from Century Arm when I asked about my washer. List of U.S. made parts, pistol grip, nut, pistol grip screw, pistol grip retaining spring, trigger disconnector, hammer, magazine, buttstock, compensator, disconnector spring, trigger sleeve. Those are all of the American parts that Century puts on a Wasser 10 in order to make it 922R compliant. Right. So out of that, if you do if you do the trigger, that's three. If you do receiver and barrel, that's five. And then your six one is your mobile <clears throat> device. If you swap that out, you are good to go. That's that's six parts. Uh, an AK has six parts if it's um, uh, not not forged, but uh, a stamp gun. If it's the other gun, you only need five mm, because okay. there's no front trunnion. So, All right, a lot so of people, if, if they want to have the com block muzzle device, they'll swap out the gas piston. And so, for those of you that 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 might be watching this, and maybe you've never bought an AK-47 before, you don't own one. You're kind of contemplating. What we're basically saying is, when you get an imported AK-47, but it doesn't say you know 100% American made in the descriptions and this and that. There's just certain things that you that you are by law supposed to not modify or touch a parts number and this and that. If you just shoot it as it shows up from the from the retailer, you're going to be fine. When we start swapping out parts and you start to get interested in doing things, you know, you can potentially run into some issues. Although I don't know if anybody, you ever actually heard of anybody actually prosecuted it, for 922 it, 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 R no. violations? It's an ad. No, it's an ad. no. Yeah. <laughs> that was, that was it's just ridiculous. Point. Yeah, it's it's something they reserve for when they want to bust you with something else and they want more things to. Yeah, 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 you yeah, yeah, you're right. They want to, yeah. they want to Tommy Chong you. Yeah, yeah. Ultimately, yeah. that was going to be my question: is what exactly is the 922R supposed to do? Well, to prevent the dangerous weapons from being imported from Europe and their military. No, no, no that, that's a part of the sporting clause. Oh yeah, because yeah, yeah. yeah. 
I, I was late. You did you guys mention the fact this only applies to rifles? Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they yeah. mentioned that. Yeah, yeah. That's and then why, if you get the pistol. Yeah. So, so that's one of why whenever Matt said, you know, grab the pistol because it doesn't have to do anything, is because nine twenty two R is only rifle. Scott P seventy nine says, if you buy an Arsenal AK pistol, it's one hundred percent import because it was imported as a pistol. That's really freaking tempting to yeah, have yeah. the nice original trigger, the nice quality uh, piston and bolt carrier group. Man, I never, I never thought of that before. I never thought, man, you could avoid all that, all that hubbub about having parts swapped out if, uh, if you go with the pistol route. Yeah. Yep. But if, and then yeah. if you SBR, you don't have to do it either. Yeah. Oh, he's got himself uh, Arsenal one hundred and six coming. Oof. Oh, five five six Arsenal one hundred and six. Interesting. Interesting. I've done that a lot lately with the the one hundred and sixes because it's harder yeah. to get five four five anymore. Yeah. And it. I I really don't think it's harder to get five four five. It's just as easy. Yeah, it's not going to be at like your Walmart or stuff like that. But online, anybody that carries seven six two will most likely carry five four five. Yeah, there, there's a lot of. I don't know if we necessarily even have domestic production, but you can get you can get uh, Wolf if I'm not mistaken or Tula. Um, yeah, there's various companies that still import five four five. It's just not yeah. the seven and six. So everybody thinks because seven and six went away, all the five four fives going away, and this is not the case. That's it did I, for a couple of weeks when people were freaking out, thinking that it was going to expand over to all the ammo. But then if you look at like Sportsman's Guide, there's probably a dozen companies that or a dozen different grades of 545 you can buy if you want to go that route. So now that's let's let's go. Let's move on to that for the next part of the discussion here. If you get an AK, what are some of the merits with going with something other than 762 by 39? I had a Zastava M77, which was a 308 Winchester AK. I never should have sold it. I, I did sell it, unfortunately. Um and that thing was awesome because I could run 308 through it. Mm -hmm. uh, it was it was very cool. I've, I've got some pictures of it still over on gun channels, but I don't have it. I haven't had it. I sold it before I was making uh, gun videos. But what are some of the merits of going, say, 545 or going with a, a 223, 556 AK? Or no, is, no. should we stay away from those things at all? No. I mean, I feel I feel with AKs the same way I feel about uh, 1911s. I'm a purist. If it's a 1911, it should be a 45. And if it's an AK, it should be 762 by 39. Yeah. Bullshit. Then, well, it, five four five, dude. Five 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 four five is by thirty nine is the AK seventy four. We're talking AK forty sevens. Well, okay, I meant to say okay. Well, I guess I, we could be talking about AKs in general. Yeah, right. just because right. somebody might say, "Ooh, what's an AK seventy four? They're looking at that. Yeah. There's a difference between yeah. the AK forty seven, which is seven six two by thirty nine, and then AK seventy four, yeah. which is five four five by thirty nine. No, I know. Are they, are they I, even? I mean, yeah. are they rifle wise? I know that uh, Zastava makes. The uh, the M eighty five in five five six, which I've owned one, nice little pistol. I like it. Um, ser seriously needs an uh, AR mag conversion kit if you really want to run it yeah. right, which is why I ended up getting right. rid of mine because uh, the at the time one, those the things were sold one, out one, everywhere and I couldn't get one. But um, it's 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 a good it's a good gun. I like it. Are they making yeah. any full size five five six? Yeah, like really? rifles still because I know they used to have yeah. one, the Walter three. Yeah, or the Wasser two. Used used the Wasser two. The, Which one was the the five five six Wasser that they used to make? Uh, I know they don't make that one anymore. There was a Vepper that you could get that was in two twenty. Yeah, there was, a, there, was a, there was a two two three Vepper, but they made the old Wasser. Um, which when they were doing those, that was when they first dropped and everybody was milling out mag wells and they were rattle guns and it, that was when Wasser got a bad name because nobody was assembling them properly. Um, but uh, I don't know if anybody's making them anymore. Five five six five five six AKs to me just seem like a waste. I mean, I, I'm like, I, why? Why just not? Why don't you get an AR? Mm -hmm. ARs are cheaper anyway. Yeah. If you want to well, fire well, five five six, why? Why so, not AR? And, and a lot of people are like, well, I'll just run the five five six steel case through it. Well, the reason that AKs work so well with steel case is because the taper of the by thirty nine round as that. As your brass, as your bolt starts to pull your round out, your that that steel is still expanding, so it's kind of pushing itself out. Whereas in a five five six, you are basically a straight wall to the neck, so that's still expanding. You're putting a lot of pressure on your bolt carrier and your bolt. So I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's well, I say a lot of pressure. It's more pressure. So that that's one thing about the. By sixty nine, by thirty nine is that's awesome. Is the taper of the cartridge? All right, Travis, I gotta head out. You take it easy.
Deuces. Later, all. Bye-bye. Bye, Petunia. And, so, uh, Matt. So, so, so uh, other than, you know, the round, what do you got to look for? Um, uh, canid sites, uh, you could get away. You could get away with some can't. That's fine. Which has gotten a lot better in recent years, by the way. It has. It, it used to be a big problem, and it's it's gotten much better than it used to be. Y- y- yes, but you know some of your built ones are still have issues, um, especially if, if it's a some guy in a home that built it. I would, I would take a headspace gauge with you if you're going to do stuff something like that. You're going to take and uh, if it's a reputable, I, I really wouldn't wouldn't worry about that. Of course, if it's like a Krebs, Fuller, or something like that, I wouldn't worry about it. Um, I'd always, you know, inspect the rivets, stuff like that. Um, but. Sorry, guys, I had to take a quick phone call. Um, do we discuss buying used? Should you consider buying used? As if you're mean, going, just, if you're going with any gun, or, I, I, mean, you know. I would be. I would. I would only say, be careful if you're buying. If you no, just know what you're buying. I mean, if you're buying. Uh, an old Zastava or uh, an Egyptian Mahdi or fucking, you know, whatever, whatever it is, um, you know, you know what it is. That, that's fine. If you're like looking at a washer, make sure you can tell, make sure you know when that washer was assembled, because there are a lot of old crap washers floating around out there mm-hmm. that Boring. were built that when, when that's when that, when 2005 hit and we could have those AKs properly again. Okay. <laughs> eh, People were I, I wouldn't in- call them properly yet. What do you mean? Well, because we still have to cut barrels, cut receipts. Well, you know what I mean. Like when we could have, you know, actual thirty-round magazines and all that kind of stuff, and when those, when that happened in two thousand five, everybody and their dog was importing washer mm-hmm. kits because they were dirt cheap. You could import a washer kit for about one hundred and twenty bucks, and then everybody was assembling them and selling them for three hundred fifty bucks. Um, hand over fist. That's how Century got big. That's that's what made them the company they are today, okay? Uh, as they were the biggest ones doing it. They were the biggest importer, but they were not the only ones importing washer kits. And even at first, Century was doing a crap job assembling washers. Some of those early Century washers from 05, 06, 07 oh, yeah. were shit. Mm-hmm. So yeah. if you're looking at a washer, washer, try and get a bead on when it was manufactured, when it was slapped together, Um that kind of thing. So you want to be a little, little careful of that. Um, obviously, as we have discussed, don't stay away from IO. Just I got lucky once, but uh, that's that's just you know. <laughs> run, run. <so laughs> that's not a put through that. Yeah. Man. Uh, yeah. Matt, what you need to do is you need to start a was- um, IO picking business for people, where you go around and you just buy everybody's IOs for them, then they buy them, then they pay you for it. You know, finders fee. That way, I mean, everybody I- gets a good one. Maybe I just got like I said, I just got lucky and and at the time I had never even heard of IO and I thought, ah, here's a cheap AK I can mess around with. I bought it for I think four hundred bucks back in two thousand and nine, two thousand ten, something like that. And I I hadn't even heard of IO. I didn't care. It was a, it was just it was just gonna be a, a junk rifle, right? Like it wasn't gonna be anything special. So I didn't really care whether you know what it was or any of that crap. And, and something uh, to watch out for these. Does yours have that rubber buffer behind the recoil spring? That little rubber. No, it did not. It okay, did so not. it was built to so, the right specs. Yes. yes. So, so yeah. So yeah, yeah. Again, if if you need that buffer, pull that buffer out and see if there's issues with it. Because yeah, that, that's that's stupid. You should not have a buffer in there to make it run. Well, they do though. The IOs do a lot of. You see a lot of these other kind of off brands because they follow original <laughs> Polish manufacturer plans, but. The gun is not, there's something not right about it where like the bull carrier can skip out or jump out. I mean, that's what my take is on what the whole buffer thing is. You should not have any kind of a rubber buffer in the rear of your recoil spring. If it is, it means the gun was not built properly. I mean, it might run and function, but it's not the way it's supposed to be. No, it's not. Yeah, you get it. Um, One that is getting my attention because, Matt, we can no longer get the $449 AMD 63s anymore. They're gone. I know. (laughs) I haven't seen one. I think you can probably find them on like gun broker and stuff. They were four ninety nine, four forty nine at one point. If you just wanted a basic one, um, yeah, and we told so, people go buy them while you can. Yeah. I yeah, was preaching yeah, that were, stuff left and right, man. I'm like, buy it while you can. These are great AKs. They're they're cheap, man. Don't don't miss out. But yeah. you know, the only bad thing I, about I those is the, when they were around. 
so it's yeah. Sucked. The the sixty three though had a forty one forty stainless steel or a forty one forty yeah. barrel, so you don't want to do magnum after magnum because you can you can wear the barrel out. Uh, it's not like a nice forty one fifty steel. So yeah, um, just to show my op, I've got an AMD sixty three. Matt has one too. Mine's the the James River Armory version, which the only difference is it had the handguard that came with it on the front instead of this traditional like sheet metal handguard. And Matt, you I remember you did the MOE magpul conversion on yours. Yeah, yeah um, and then pretty, this one came pretty. with the Phoenix Tech grip and and buttstock on it. So, uh, yeah, that's a, that's a bullet sling on there. You never know, right? But anyway, I've, I've had good luck with it. I mean, I've only put oh, maybe probably less than a thousand rounds through it, but I don't do mag dumps with it. It's just kind of a kind of a you know play around range gun or whatever, just kind of a toy more or less. But um, yeah. Do you guys find that, like you were just talking about, hey, go out and buy it before it's gone, and now you mm. can't get them? Do you ever come across a situation where you're, you're telling people, like, I wouldn't say warning, I'd say giving advice, hey, this thing's going to leave the market, you should really go get one. And a lot of people respond to you like, oh, I'm going to go panic buy. You know? Yeah, do- I, I get that all the time, because I'll tell it, it, well, and, and for different reasons too. I mean, whether it's specifically because of the gun or whether it's because, which, you know, like, like with the AMDs, we were talking about, Hey, these are cheap. Whether it's sometimes I'll say that stuff about, um, uh, surplus stuff that might be cheap somewhere. Hey, get it while you can. They don't make these anymore. Or whether it's just in general, I've done videos where I'll tell people, Hey, things don't look good politically. Maybe buy what you can, when you can, you know, just be ready. And they always get the oh, panic buy. You're telling everybody panic buy. No, I'm not telling everybody panic buy. Calm down. Just take advantage of these things as they come up. You know, you find good deals, try and take advantage of them. Do some and research I, on it and watch multiple channels worth of cha- multiple channels worth of content, read reviews on them. Do get into the forums and do some research because you know I was totally sold on the Raz American Made AK forty seven. Look, the thing's quality. It's it's awesome. Blah blah blah. And the next thing I know, I'm being touted as something that's good potential time bomb once it hits five thousand rounds. Um, and you know, and again, that, that, that was really, really disappointing. And then after that, I had no desire at all, which is really sad to want to buy an American made AK 47, even PSA or any of these other companies that make them, you know, as much as I want to support American industry, when it comes to the AK, I just don't feel like, and there are American companies that are capable of making them. They could, if they would do it the right way. And there's some that do, you know, if you want to spend the money, um, Jason Stewart has a really good question for us here. And again, Jason, as you know, when it comes to buying guns, man, it's whatever your budget is. Uh, so what's the price? What's the price range for a top notch AK? What would you guys say sets a standard as a high quality AK 47 or 74? What's a, what's a solid brand to go with where a person's well, not going to worry about getting duped? Arsenal's always been a solid brand. So yeah, Arsenal, I mean, that, Weber, yeah. yeah. Um, if you can afford it, Krebs. Uh, so we're, you know, we're, we're talking to arsenals are at least 1100, 1200. I always go yeah. like Atlantic now, firearms and look up the guns. Now if you want to step you know? down, like, like we yeah. talked about before for, um, yeah. you know, wassers nowadays, modern wassers, the ones that have been built in the last, you know, five to 10 years are, are yeah. all really, really nice. Um, I'll definitely say that anything coming out as a Stava, I've now had three different Zestava, two pistols in one rifle. And those things were always just solid. Even if you go back and buy some of the the older, you know, back before there was a Saba, they were just Yugos. Um, same factory, same everything. But the country went and changed names and did some shit. And so now they got to call well, them the Sestava. kind of civil war, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just a but, little, you know, like little the, bloodshed on the like side. The old, you, know? and you can still find it, like some of the old Yugo was the M70s and M70As and some mm-hmm. of the ones with the underfolder stocks and stuff. And those are good rifles. Um, Egyptian, Egyptian uh, AKs are good if you can find it Chinese rifle uh, polytech or something like that those are those fantastic are but you're going to pay for those because we haven't imported them in you know what almost 30 years since the ban i think the ban was in what 89 something yeah. like that something uh like that early so but those those i mean the chinese military knows how to make good weapons um so those are good if you if you can find them uh i i had i've always i had always liked ddi i had heard they'd had some issues every now and then but overall i'd always like ddi of course now that's basically palmetto state armory yeah, yeah. So, um l- l- yeah. L- l- like i said my ddi it's so what i think that it, it was is all the parts and stuff that they really hardened i think they got that finish or whatever what made them too hard so that's why the bolt carrier is not is getting beat up by the trigger pack. Well, Travis, yeah. 
you mentioned that you know American companies just don't want to make it for whatever. Why? Why would that? Why do you think that that would be? I mean, if we found, say, if we were in war, yeah. uh, war with the Russians or in World War Two, we found yeah. an AK. We obviously we took it apart and seen how it was built. Why is it just because it's so many parts, or is it got to do with? Uh, you know, nationalism. Uh, what, no, what, no, 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 no. Here, here's 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 what I see with with the Raz Forty Seven. It's cheaper to cast a trinian than it is to forge one. It's all about penny it's pinching. All about money. When it gets down to it, and the metallurgy, the quality of the steel used in it too. The, I mean, it, we could. We, I mean, the companies could, and the companies that do charge a very pretty penny for what I would consider a properly manufactured AK Forty Seven with true hardened steel and and forged barrels and. And unfortunately, these things we still have to import and get from other countries because we just don't see it in the variety of the AKs that are available. There's just a lot of cost cutting that happens. You see bad rivet jobs. You see cannon sights. You see wood stocks that just like split and fall apart. Um, it's just we don't. And it's almost like what we're doing to cars these days, how they just don't last, you know. Um, I, think, I can give you an exact answer why the AKs in the United States are not, you know, you can't get them super cheap. It's because... Ooh. There's no people that are actually hammer forging, and it's all, um, it, yes, it is penny pinching, but they're doing it in the wrong way, and essentially, it's so expensive to manufacture an AK. Um, you know, I'm, I'm good friends with a guy out in Arizona that's making his own uh, front trunnion, and he went to a machine shop. Now, granted, this is only the front trunnion to make one front trunnion from his um, schematics was well over $7,000 just to make one front trunnion. Well, that's what I mean with, with the advances in technology and manufacturing and stuff. Can't those costs be cut down and still be able to make a profit yeah. on your item As, and still, you know, cover your cost in making it. But or that's, it, that's for the machine shop to cover their costs. You know, they have yeah, the but, CNC machines. They have to buy the coolant, the tools, the, the metal. No, the reason it costs so much is he was having one made. If yeah. you mass produce them, you can bring the cost down. This is one of the problems I have with some American gun manufacturers. And I think some of the guys that are getting into manufacturing guns and gun parts and gun accessories are not gun guys. They come from another you know, background in manufacturing and, and sometimes that stuff translates over. But as somebody in automotive manufacturing, I'm telling you, you could make these things all day long so cheap that everybody could afford one and it would be a good quality. You're gonna have some that are gonna have problems. You just put a decent warranty on it and you're fine you know, and, and take care of your customers. What I've heard is that there's, there's, it's more labor intensive to make the parts and there's, there's more, I don't want to say steps to it, but there's just, there's more to it than say manufacturing an AR-15. But we do have the capability to do it. Why nobody is doing it for a, an affordable price is beyond me. Will you make up, you make up for the cost of, of, of extra steps or better material or extra heat treating or, you know, a special coating or whatever the heck it is in volume. That's how we're able to sell these cars for what we sell them for. And some people might go, they cost a lot. Oh, dude, trust me. If we were making 500 Chevys instead of 5 million Chevys, you wouldn't believe what they would cost. But when you, a part, a part that you make one of for, say, $1,000, we can run it down the assembly line for 60 cents a part. I'm not kidding. But we're running a million parts a year. It, it's, it's, it's that volume that brings the price down. So whoever wants to crack the American AK market and be the number one, the top dog, everybody's going to buy this thing, everybody's going to want to get two of them, has got to go with volume. And they've got to handle any warranty issues quickly, and they've got well, to be courteous to their customers. You, you, you well, also have to think, how many, so, so, so you, you just said some. You're, you're pumping out like 10 million of them. But let's say, let's say their company XYZ is like, okay, I want to build AKs. How many AKs do you think they'll sell in a year? Well, that that was my question too. Ten, fifteen, hundred thousand. Well, let's, well let's, that's let's, just let's, okay. Now wait, 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 wait. Let's, let's what if what if an AK forty seven? What if a reliable, one hundred percent American made AK forty seven that would had, you know could use imported mags and everything else was three hundred fifty bucks out the door at the sporting goods store? It won't happen. But it could. No, 
you, you won't have the cause. You won't have the economic of, of uh, um, sorry, the uh, economic of crap. Can't just think of the word. Scale. scale. Yeah, thank you. Um, you you're not going to have enough demand for it because the firearm industry is still small. Well, okay, think about some of some of these guns that get sold that are in the three to five hundred dollar range, guns and stuff like that. I think if you had a properly manufactured AK and could put it out there for three hundred fifty or four hundred dollars, uh, that was American made, hundred percent American made, and would work yep. and you had the quality that them. matched European imports. I think they would sell like hotcakes. Yeah. I mean, and yeah, I was just saying right now. Oh, okay, here's again. the thing. Let, yeah. let me let me tell hot you guys cake. a little no, secret oh, about the on. automotive hot manufacturing cake. world. Ha, ha, let me tell cake. you how many hotcakes do you think it is? If it, let's say it's a thousand year, uh, a thousand a month. That's twelve thousand. You're not going to be able to get it down. You're going to have to sell, you know, let's say, you know, hundreds of thousands a year. You're not going to be no, able to get no, it down to that price. No, Here, no. Here, hold on. Okay, how many people does it take to, to work in a factory where you make guns? There's what, not many. between, uh, say, 20 and 60? How many people does it take to work in a factory where you make cars? Thousands. Okay, do you see this? So your economy of scale, you're not, you don't need as big of a building. You don't need as many people. You don't need, there's a lot. It's a much smaller thing to build. There ain't as many pieces. You don't need as many check pictures. You don't need, there's a whole lot of things to it. Let me give you guys a little dirty secret of the automotive world. That subcompact car that is under $20,000 costs the same to build as a one ton pickup truck with a diesel engine that costs $80,000. It literally costs the same to build yeah. seriously so okay. you're telling me you can't crank out rugers and sell those at the store for 400 bucks ruger handguns for 400 bucks at the store and they couldn't on the same assembly line and the same factory crank out ak's bullcrap well you also got to take into consideration that it's not it's not necessarily just going to be to the public you know they're probably going to put in military contracts they're you know, going to see if the French want to buy them as well. So it's not like it would just be firearm owners here in the United States that would be yeah. looking to buy one. And all these military contracts, you think they're going to step backwards in time for AK? No, right. but another thing, another thing too is the machines and the tooling. Yes, yeah, some stuff's going to wear out, but overall, you could make the exact same AK model for the next thirty years, and it would sell. With cars, you change the design every four to five years. Otherwise, people lose interest and your competitor takes over. People want an AK. If you just made a base model AK that somebody could tear apart and reaccessorize, like everybody does with their Glocks, you could use the same stuff. You would use the same fixtures. You would use the, everything would be the same for 30 years. That really reduced your manufacturing costs. When you have to retool, even if you make like a slight deviation, if you make a part an inch longer, that could be $80,000 in tooling. And, and six months of trying to get it to work right in the machine. I know that sounds ridiculous, but sometimes I would over a slight change. And, or you change one inch on this end and 15 other parts on the other side of the, the car are thrown out of whack and now you've got a, and it's a total fight. And then the, the, the launch date is, whereas if you've got, if we, if you made, if you made, I don't know, uh, 1985 Ford Escort since 1985 till today and it was the exact same car, all the parts are interchangeable from now till all the way back in 1985. Dude, they'd be selling them for nothing because the, the, over time, the manufacturing costs get less and less and less. Even if you have to replace worn-out tooling, you're still making the same old, same old. You know what I mean? And that's why European countries can mass-produce AKs on such a huge scale like that. To tell you the truth, what you guys are overlooking is you guys are fixing the amount of like potential weaponry sold. Instead, you should be looking at what the manufacturing volume is and the overall price if there was a guy if there was a company that like mass produced us made ak's that were reliable good had good customer service for like 300 bucks it would murder the ar-15 market pretty much overnight yep and it would it would also knock out foreign sales as well and and you know there's always somebody that's going to be a purist that's going to want to import it and i totally get that 
And, and I don't think any company is really going to step up to the plate. There are lots of gun companies that would rather run something out of their barn and sell the guns for thousands of dollars each and make five guns a year and go, look at us. We're, we're so great. And, yeah, your quality is great, and I think it's great that you're making it here and, and all this other stuff. But you're, you're kind of short-sighted of becoming a successful company. Sure, you're making a profit, but, you know, it's – it's kind of like a Lamborghini or Ferrari, right? They only make so many of them every year, and they're so expensive. And you know, uh, so it's really if you, as long as somebody's buying your crap, you're going to stick with that business model. So it's really hard to convince somebody to jump in on this when, like what Awag's saying, the Europeans already have capacity to do this. They've been doing this for decades before we ever even tried it to try to break in there and do this thing, to wedge themselves in there and go, look, we're actually going to be competitive. It's, it's just not, it's not, when you sit in these board of director meetings with all these automotive types or, or with any of these industrial types, dude, these guys got college degrees, but they don't know the first thing about what they're actually making. And they think they're smarter than everybody else. So if you want to go in there with a sales pitch, uh, uh, let's, let's make a quality American made affordable AK that, you know, we can make for decades and blah, blah, they won't now. I don't care how many part charts and graphs you show them, they just won't do it. <laughs> part of that's because they have to literally go up against these European and Tom Block countries that had all this stuff left over from World War II and the Cold War and all that tooling and equipment that it <clears throat> did and is still perfectly fine. All built and slapped together by socialist nations who didn't care if they were making any money or not. But it, it, it's pretty... It's, it's kind of a tall order for these companies to truly do that at a price point that you know up front and, that price point is not going to be 350 bucks a rifle there's just no way and here at home all the military contracts that paid for all the r&d and everything on the m16 translates over to the ar-15 and now anybody can make them yeah and all of that was paid for with your tax dollars before you were born or with your parents or your grandparents tax dollars so i mean uh it's it's the same sort of thing over here We've got the capacity to do that over here because we've always had the capacity. And military changes contracts from time to time. Colt did it, then Bushmaster, then FN, then I don't know who went, you know, got it next. But they just jump from whoever will make this this design for the lowest lowest bid. And the government owns the rights to to that sort of thing. There's, you know, if you have a patent on something that you have a government contract for, somebody else can pull it out from underneath you legally, and you're stuck. So, you know, America is always going to be the AR-15 manufacturing place and overseas is always going to be the AK manufacturing place. Now, the one thing I will disagree with you on, uh, Squib, on this is that everybody keeps shouting about this in the chat on the YouTube side. PSA is really making some ground. They're not making a $350 AK-47, but they're making a $600, 100% American made AK-47. And I'm looking at the specs. 4150 steel treated barrel, hammer forged trunnion, hammer forged bolt, hammer forged carrier. Uh, Squib, do you see anything wrong with that at all? I mean, we talked about metallurgy. Hopefully, they're using a high quality steel that's going to last the abuse. You know, what do you think about that anyway? You know, I mean, I, I would think that over time, people are going to report if these things are no good. But I mean, six hundred bucks is better than what what some of these imports are coming in at right now, right? Oh yeah, yeah. The, wait, four ninety nine, five. Well, four to five fifty, five to six is pretty much kind of the going price for a lot of these Polish kits that are coming in that are getting swapped over and changed out. Now they do have one over at uh, Classic Farms. They got the Pioneer Arms, which is made from a actual uh, Polish radon barrel trunnion receiver. It's as much of it that can be brought over as it is. Um, and then it's finished up by James River Armory. So uh, there there are some that are coming in, but the AMD 63s for 500 are basically all washed up. You now they're gone. Um, but yeah, no, I would say PSA is is that one kind of bastion of hope trying to do it the right way. And the fact that they're addressing the issues and uh, trying to work out, I think they're already on a Gen 2 or Gen 3 AK-47 by this point. So anyway, what do you think about that? Um, would the PSA be a solid purchase from what you've seen on the build? PSA is okay. Um, I just really wish that they would get their um, rear dust covers down because they tend to crack a lot. Mm. Well, Kalashnikov has that right now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's because they probably because they're not using high enough quality steel. Yeah. I've seen pictures of that, of the. Uh, yeah. But is it is it Kalashnikov concern or is it USA? Kalashnikov well, USA, which is. concern is not in the yeah. United States. States and Kalashnikov yeah. USA is has no relation to Kalashnikov concern. 
they're kind of selling, I think, the American public on what you think is an authentic Kalashnikov AK-47 rifle, and it's not AK or AWAG. Is that safe to say? Because you're kind of the AK expert. It's not. Here. Yeah. Kalashnikov USA has no relation to Kalashnikov concern. Yeah, okay. they're they're um, what was it? RRA, I think it was, used to be the name of the company used to import for Kalashnikov concern. Mm. So when Kalashnikov got banned, they decided they were going to change their name and start making rifles instead of importing them, and that's where that all came from. And the chairman of Kalashnikov Concern has stated that if the um, sanctions against them ever get lifted, they are filing copyright suit against Kalashnikov USA. Mm, okay. Yeah, when I started reading about it, I was like, what do you mean it's not Kalashnikov? I didn't understand that, you know, just looking at what was going on. I, I thought, oh, cool, they're going to start making them here. Everybody, everybody, you always see all the people putting comments on those videos. Oh, it's great that they're making AKs in the U.S. now, and you know, everything's they're getting and authentic, and it's it's really not. It's just kind of a play off the name when you think about it. Um, so again, for those of you chiming in, I would say you're going to be solid going with a uh, uh, Palmetto State Armory uh, AK-47 if you want to go American. And again, you maybe you maybe you got that Raz that has five, six, seven thousand rounds through, and it still passes a a no go no no go gauge test or field test or whatnot. Um, but I mean, for the same money, you get yourself a PSA. You might as well go that route. Plus, PSAs are going to have a lifetime guarantee. I don't think the Raz do. Unless nope. the RAS has a major malfunction issue, like a like a like a quality control issue, they have to address. You've got one year. Yeah, is that right, Jim? Yeah, that's Sorry. right. And I mean, I you know, I don't really see, the, and they're they're they're, I, they're going up in price too. They've gone up tremendously since they first came out. I've seen the prices. C thirty nine V twos are like eight or nine hundred dollars now, aren't they? Yeah, they're, they're, they're ridiculously over. It's I don't understand why because they were trying to make an affordable American made AK forty seven. That's what they were touting. I remember watching the intro videos with Jacob Herman showing it off on Jaeger's channel when they were introducing him and talking about him and he was at SHOT Show giving presentations on it and stuff. And I'm not saying it, it wouldn't, it, it can't run. I mean, they run, I had one, I had a RAS 47 and put some rounds through before I sold it. Um, but that was before I knew about the headspace issues. So you definitely don't want to go with the cast run in. Um, so if you're in the market for one, you're going to expect to spend probably close to $600 uh, before you get it home. Uh, the pistol, Matt, are there any good AK-47 pistol deals left out there? I You're mean, looking at good, you know, I mean, you can occasionally find some in the $600 range. Um, there, let me check here. Uh, so PSA is not doing an AK pistol yet, right? They've got no, their nine millimeter. They got their nine millimeter pistol. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But that's, I mean, that. Oh no, there is one. There is one. They've, it's sold out, but it's, yeah, the PSA AKP. GF3 MOA SBA3 clad pistol. So they do make one. Okay, they do make one. I didn't know they made one. Yeah, well, yeah, I'm yeah, looking at the, yeah. Promising too. So I'm, I'm looking around and I'm seeing you can get uh, a Draco for about 620. Obviously Arsenal has plenty of pistols that you could probably pick up. You can they they do make the C39 V2 pistol for about 700 bucks. Um you know, with with the issues that it's having, I don't know if that's necessarily uh, something you want to do, I guess it just depends. Um, you can get, uh, uh, well, let's see. I'm, I'm just, just kind of scanning here real quick. I'm trying to see if I can find a Zestava. Um, well, I don't, you know, I don't think Zestava, you're going to find any Zestavas right now until they start doing their own importing. Yeah. Yeah. So what's the deal? Yeah, somebody made a comment that Zestava is going to start importing again. Was there a long time that they weren't bringing anything into the U.S.? Well, they were. Century was importing their stuff, and then they had a falling out with Century. Oh, okay. They're going to they're going to open up their own U.S. branch and start bringing yeah. their own stuff into the country. Okay. Okay. I got you. Anyway, the uh, the AK pistol that you said that you ordered and that just came in, just like unmessed with. Did you just order that like you would order anything else off the internet, or do you have to go through yeah. any kind of special steps? Or? Yeah, I ordered both. In fact, both the ones I had the uh, the M eighty five and M ninety two. Um, both I ordered from Bud's Gun Shop and yeah. just ordered them so, like it was so any other gun. Just like, just like any other pistol, like Glocks that come in from uh, yeah uh, Europe or CZs or or anything from Turkey. All those yeah. like, like the Turkish. Um, Pistols, the um, MP5 clones, all those are Zenith good firearms. To go. Yeah, Zenith. If you get the rifles, they have to be 922R compliant. Yeah, so, uh, and then I think I we, jump on the only thing I will say right. is uh, with with the pistols is they're going to come in usually. Um, and if you buy the the Dracos and this kind of stuff, it's it's uh, not as big of an issue because that's part of what you're paying for is for um, a Century to do this. So by the time you get it, it's it's fine. 
Um, but like specifically with the Zastavas, um, uh, like with mine, it comes with a welded on nut over the threads at, on the barrel because technically it's, it, that's part of it. it. Pistols aren't allowed to be imported if they have a threaded barrel. So it comes in with a just big, nasty, ugly looking flat, you know, just round nut. And it's got one little weld on it, just zzz, real quick. And so like with mine, I took a Dremel and I cut the weld and took off the nut. And then you can put a muzzle brake on it. Um, that's with the Zastavas because they don't even bother messing with them. Anything you buy from Century that is going to be the Dracos and the mini Dracos and that kind of stuff, they've already done that. They import the the guns with a, a nut <clears throat> welded on over the, the threading. And then they get them in and then they, they cut them and put real, real muzzle brakes on them. Um, but it's not that difficult to do. And again, I only paid 520 bucks for mine, yeah. you know, so it was a good, I didn't, I, and I don't mind working on my own guns a little bit, um, but for 520 bucks and I got three magazines and I got a SIG brace with it for free. Yeah. So it was the Pat pistols right now are 630 on, on Bud's gun shop, 630. And that's no brace included. Whew. Yeah. 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 It'll be interesting to see once us with us start importing how those prices are affected. Uh, they were saying in the chat on the YouTube side that they've got the website up and that they've got prices posted. They'll probably have MSRPs on there. Yeah. Um, so it's hard telling what the actual, I, you know, street value can be 50 to to $100 below MSRP, sometimes more, you know. So we need to definitely look into that because that's, yeah, I love the, you know, the Zastavas were really, really nice rifles when they were yeah. coming in. Oh, yeah. and, and that one, in fact, the one that they've got there. That uh, that pap, which the pap is the Zastava, it's the same thing. Yeah, the one yeah. they've got there that that's the M92 for 653 bucks. So, I mean, it's a good gun, trust me. I, I like it. That's still kind of, yeah. it feels expensive, I know. But the on the plus side, you're getting oh, what is that, a 10 inch barrel? Yeah, uh, they're yeah, 10 inch barrel, 10 and a half, I think. Yeah, yeah, so you're getting a 10 inch barrel. Um, and you're getting a solid build that hasn't been tampered with by a company here, swapping parts out or anything like that. I mean, you're getting a good solid AK. In fact, same thing can be said for the Dracos, and the Dracos are a little bit cheaper, and you get a little bit longer barrel. You're getting a 12-inch barrel, I think, with the Draco, and the Draco is yeah. 620. Um, now, I like the build quality of the Zastava better side-by-side. Side. The Zastava just feels more solid, plus it's got the 1.5-millimeter um, uh, 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 steel uh what am I trying to say? Receiver as mm. opposed to a one millimeter receiver. So it's a little bit thicker receiver. It just feels a little beefier. Does the Slavas do as compared to the Dracos? Um, but either one is going to be fine. If you want a little bit longer barrel, you go with the Draco. If you don't mind the, the little bit shorter, barrel. But I mean, you're getting an AK for 620 to 650 bucks. That is, is complete and untampered as it was from the factory, um, which in my mind is a big step up from just about all the other, AKs that are out there floating around, I mean, you know, because they all have to have best parts swapped off here and there and whatever else. This is fresh from the factory. Um, so, one other thing between the um, M92 and the Draco, if you're not, if you don't care if it has a chrome line barrel or not, the M92 be one I would go with. If you want a chrome line barrel, you have to go with the Draco. Just for yeah, some reason, that's true. but does not put the chrome line barrel in the M92. But they did the M85, so you know. Yeah, it's, you know, it's you know. yeah. Now the one that we Matt, we've this has come up several times. It seems like it comes up on like your trigger time talks about once a month. The Riley Defense guns, and that's that's they're bringing that up on the on the YouTube side. Somebody said, "Hey, keep forgetting about Riley Defense." Yeah, they're. I'm looking at I'm looking at Classic Farms right now. They're about six fifty, and I don't know if they're using like a Polish parts kit, and then they're doing the American made parts. Uh, I haven't really. I know that AK Forty Seven Operators Union has tested those, but I really don't know. If they've had issues or not, so I'm looking at one right now. 4150 nitride barrel, machine side scope mount rail, uh, Tapco G2 trigger group, 659 with like a nice quad rail on the front of it. And this but is did we say that those are those are the old IO factory or something like that? Well, because there was out. so what happened is so. Uh, I mean, IO you can't buy IOs anymore. They they no. basically they well you can. Is, are they gold? Are they just because they started out as Golden Tiger imports, and then they were just importing a bunch of crap and then they decided to start doing their own AKs out of parts kits, um, Polish parts kits and that kind of stuff. And then that's when they came up with the name IO or inner ordinance. And now go see if you can find a brand new inner ordinance anywhere. So the company still exists on some level, but I don't know that they're not actively manufacturing AKs under the name IO Inc. Maybe that's there what the were, Riley defenses are. There now. were, well, I don't know. There were rumors 
that they sold their factory to another company. I don't know who. I have I have no idea who that company is, but that they sold their AK factory to another company that is manufacturing AKs. And I, I remember the only thing that that made people suspect it was Riley, but I think since then we've been we've come to the conclusion that's not them. Was that Riley is also advertising? We are uh, selling uh, AKM Polish variants. So people went, oh, Polish that the Polish variants. That means they're importing mm -hmm. Polish kits. That's what IO was doing. Maybe they're the ones that bought IO's factory. And the fact that uh, I think they were both over there on the East Coast somewhere, but I, I don't think Riley Defense is IO. I think it's just a coincidence. Okay. Um, or 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 maybe it is them. They're just making the guns right because I've heard good things about Riley. Because just because just because they go and buy IO's old stuff, oh, it doesn't mean anything. Doesn't mean that know? they're going to yeah. make shit yeah. the way IO did. Yeah, you know what I mean. That does. I yeah, mean, they could have. They could have um, bought IO. IO was making ARs. They are making different calibers. They are. They've. It says we no longer do AK forty sevens. It says right on the main side. Yeah, because they, they sold do still sponsor stuff. them. They, they yeah, so they do. They've the switched factory. over completely to ARs. Yeah, yeah. So and, and for all so they're still around, point, but for all I know, Riley could have bought all of IO's stuff. I mean, there was nothing wrong with the equipment IO was using. It was their. It was their quality control was yeah. shit. It wasn't yeah. the. It wasn't the. It wasn't the Polish parts that they were using. It wasn't the, the the machines and stuff they were using, I'm, I'm left to assume. I'm sure it wasn't the building they were using. It was the people that were working there that were cranking out shit. So yeah, like Riley Ryan Defense could have come yeah. along and bought all their stuff, but that doesn't mean they're the same company as, yeah. as IO at all because I've heard good things about Riley. So but now here's the only thing that scares me about Riley. I'm looking at the specs right now, and if they don't say it, you definitely want to call to find out. 4150 nitride barrel, and then for the receiver, fully heat-treated mil-spec receiver. Okay, it does say okay, it does say mil spec forge front trunnion. Okay, that's good. That's good. So, you know, if you want to try one, you want to go that route, you know, do it. Um, I don't know if they're using a parts kit or anything like that. They don't really give you a whole lot of details on Classics website, but uh, so okay, mil spec hammer forge trunnion, nitrated barrel, fully heat treated mil spec receiver. And I don't know about the bull carrier group. It doesn't say. So yeah, you'd probably be okay going that route. I suppose you get a two year warranty with it. Uh, four point eight out of five on eight reviews. They do use a AMD sixty three muzzle brake on the front of it, which is kind of interesting. The one that I'm looking at right now. <laughs> so you know, but then again, for fifty bucks more, you can get a Wasser. Yeah. That you know, it just kind of and the you know, I would say the Wasser is now, like you said, you want to stay away from some of those older ones that might have had some issues. Um, yeah. The newer ones are going to be fine. Yeah. The thing with the Wasser is they're putting Century's putting their um, RAS forty seven furniture on there, so. Yeah, you might be Ooh. paying like fifty dollars more for the rifle, but you're gonna have to change that furniture up because eventually it's gonna break. Just basically splits or cracks. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, even just regular use, you you know, you you hear about the furniture cracking and having problems and stuff like that. I mean, honestly, I would probably just go magpul MOE from the start if I can, but I don't see that I don't think really, really, I'm, I'm telling you, man, Magpul has cornered the market on what should be mil spec. Like whether it's ARs or AKs. Every right, they should just put Mac pull shit on it. It's better than than than. Uh, now, well, I'll, I'll I'll get it. If you've got really nice, if you've got a, a nice wood stock on an AK, that obviously looks great. But outside of that, if it's if it's a comparison to any other plastic crap on an AR or an AK, just just throw Mac pull on it. Mac pull should be the new mill spec. It's good stuff. It's not fantastic. It's not perfect, but it works better than mill spec, and it looks pretty damn good too. So. I mean, I've, I've always loved the the MOE handguards, um, yeah, but great. I mean, honestly, I do. I don't mind the barrel style handguards on an AR-15. They work well. Just kind of the uh, the cool ones, with the little, you know, the tin liner yeah. inside of them. So they're good. But I guess, you know, maybe if you want to attach anything, it's a little bit easier to just go with the M-Lock style and uh, mm -hmm. go that route. So if you can, you know, if you can pick yourself up an AK-47, consider going. Save yourself the hundred bucks and just get it with uh, the Magpul right out of the box. You're going to probably pay like, you might pay 50 to 60 bucks more than the Woodstock model, but you're still saving versus having to buy it and then put it all on yourself and hope you get everything to work, you know? Because sometimes you have to do a little bit of kind of finagling to get the Magpul stuff to fit properly and some sanding and stuff like that. But, but no, I do agree with you on that. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, you know, trying to give somebody advice on it. I, again, I'm not trying to just be biased towards Wasser, but if you want to go that route, I mean, you're looking at about 700. Um, nothing wrong with trying some of these other, uh, I want to call them American startup companies, but some of these other American companies, if they've got the right, materials in the build you want to look for forged as much as possible hammer forged or milled right uh, but those all have stamp seal receivers too so you know um i think you guys would be okay so i don't know 
Um, so you guys are chatting out there. So, so uh, David uh, Kingpin, have you considered picking up an AK at all? Have you ever looked into buying one, or you were you ever sold on something that you saw advertised on a channel or something you saw popping up a lot? Anything ever catch your attention? I love the sound of an AK running through its action. I mean, uh, I could listen. I could listen to that all day long, make it my ringtone. So is that why you're a fan uh, of uh, Red Dawn? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's the sound right there i could hear i could listen to that that should that could be like my alarm clock in the morning. <laughs> your text messages when you get a text message <laughs> yeah the go. problem that i face with the ak is you know all the all the restrictions here on the type of rifles that can be sold and then for the type of rifles that can be sold which uh options you can get with them uh yeah. and i don't spend enough time at out-of-town gun shows to know you know what's available somewhere else so eventually sooner or later i'm going to broaden myself out to one of these you know fancy gun shows out there somewhere that's not in my state and i'm going to get a hold of one uh all the ones that are quote unquote maryland compliant here seem to me like they're super expensive like i was looking yeah. at 1200 dollars guns uh the pistols were starting at you know 650 700 and uh you know, it's just not in the cards right now. So I'll probably have to wait and, and find find one out of state or try to find one used somewhere before I, before I can get my hands on one. Well, that's also the issue here in New Jersey is in New Jersey, AK-47 is banned by name. So all the rifles that I own are not AK-47s. There's the Zestava M72s, Zestava M76, the Romanian PSL. Um you know this um and it's not md it's a it's a romanian gun um what is it the uh, oh geez it's the um it's the military version of the the wasser 10. um you know it, it, it's not an ak-47 so you know i get around that and i always bring my stuff to the range and people are like how did you get that here right kids are banned and i was just like it's not it's an a mind your own business and go back to shooting you <laughs> it's not an AK. what does it say on the receiver check it out look even the AK, if it was a russian imported saiga it wouldn't be an ak-47 because they don't even make them anymore yeah and here's here's the thing with the terminology is everybody is so keen on saying ak-47 and most of the time, they're not even talking about an AK-47. They're talking about an AKM. An AK-47 yeah. has a milled receiver, whereas the AKM is a stamped receiver with forged tri uh, front and rear trunnion. In the military, we just called them all AKs, whether AK-47, AK-74, AKM. That's, or that's one of the clones. because it's yeah. just AK. You know, yeah. that's, it's... It's There's not, a guy shooting at us with an AK. What kind? It could have been an RPK for all we know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's based on that action, you know, because there are just so many of them out there. And these, some of these, these countries were getting them from all over the place. Like, didn't Iraq get them from like three or four different countries? You know, yeah, Iraq, so, most of them from Romania and China. I would just like to point out one thing real quick. One thing most people don't know that the AK was actually originally designed to be a stamped receiver. Mm -hmm. It yep. was just so shitty at first, and they didn't have the, the ability to properly weld like uh, rails on the inside of it that they had to go back to mill to put it into production because they were breaking rifles left and right. <laughs> they were trying to because they were trying to copy the Sturmgewehr. That's what they were trying to do. They wanted a mm -hmm. cheap to make, uh, uh, you know, because this was during World War II, right? Like they just got pushed back to the other side of the country by Germany. They're opening up. They're starting within two years. They're re reopening, or building from scratch all these new factories to build weapons. And and Stalin at the time is like, we need something like what the Germans have. I need something that is quick to make and can lay can just lay, lay firepower downrange. Because they were running Mosins and SVT 40s and shit, you know they were still using the the, the Nagant revolvers for God's sake. He's, he's like, we got we got to do something. So they 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 come up with the AK 47 design as a stamped receiver, which is great. And then once they put it into production and started making, it, and they pumped out a few thousand of them, the internal rail they they didn't have the technology to properly weld the rails right. So when the bolt would ride back and forth, the rails would start to pop apart. And, and before you know it, it, it the, the bolt would slam back after firing, the rails would fall off, and the whole gun would just, 
explode. They had to pull out old uh, 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 milling machines from that they had used to make Mosins out of and retool them to where they could make milled receivers for these things because they were so far, so deep into the design. They had done everything else. They'd, they'd, they'd gone to a whole new caliber. They, were, they built entire factories just for this fucking rifle that they're like, we have to do something. So we're going milled receivers. That's all we can do right now. We got to go milled receivers because we're, we're too invested in this. And Germany's taking over half our damn country at this point. And we got we to gotta start fighting back. So it's it's actually an interesting story. Not that anybody cared, but <laughs> I care. I always okay, care. So we got a question from the uh, from the YouTube side. I want to take a question. I keep checking on the gun channel side. Um, first of all, Adam, I sent you an invite. I don't know why you're never on my contact list. Adam Jimenez, you're always invited to join us, bro. I sent you an invite if you want to join in. Um, so uh, AWAG, I keep falling back to you on this because you've got a little more AK knowledge than I do. The Viscas, Visca seven sixty two by thirty nine VSKAs. What are your thoughts on the Viscas? Am um, I pronouncing it right? Sure, huh? be simple. Stay away from them. But they seem like they've got a pretty good build quality. But what's the what's the deal? What have we seen in videos and testing and stuff like that? It didn't have they made it through a thousand round tests and well, stuff or to what? My personal experience: the heat treating is wrong on the front trunnion and oh. the carrier group. It'll be fine for probably about two thousand rounds, uh, but that's my safe zone. Uh, other than that. The, the heat treating is very, very wrong. They say they use an S7 tool steel, though. Does that matter from terms of durability? With tool steel, they're making the trunnion yeah. harder than the bolt and carrier. Yeah, and that's the right The bolt, bolt is 4140, so that's yeah. a bad thing to do then, or what? Carburized 4140 steel bolt? Or in, in comparison, the trunnion is so much harder than the bolt and carrier that the bolt and carrier are prematurely wearing. Yeah. That's okay, so they're they, trying too hard to make the trunnion for not wearing down, that they're not paying attention to the metallurgy on the rest of the gun. Exactly. Right. Okay, yeah, okay, so it's issue, chewing them up. Yeah, this is the issue that um, if you look at the video that Mac did with um, James Yeager, that was the problem that they had with the rifle that they had. They were getting uh, premature wear on the bolt carrier group and the bolt. So, I mean, And that's the finally the rifle that made James Yeager say, hmm, maybe Century isn't as good as what I thought they were. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, because I mean, people are asking from the crowd on that, and again, you see some people saying they have. Now, wasn't there a problem with one of them where they had a rivet that was not correctly done, or there was something that? I think Rodsky's one had one. The one that he tested, the one of the rivets was slightly off, but it didn't ever amount to anything during his um test that he did. His actually survived his test, so that's something that that's better than the RES forty seven he had, where you had the front sight falling to pieces as you shoot. But, you know, we're not saying don't buy these things. Go go with what you want to buy with. Go with what you're most interested in. I would rather have you have something than nothing. But when you're looking at spending, you know, 740 750 So, Adam, you asked this question. Why why did this pop up? Were you thinking about buying one? Adam Jimenez, yeah. by the way, with us yeah. in the flesh. Okay. Dr. Jimenez, Dr. Uh, J. Yeah. Uh, no, man, I was just looking like. Yeah. I mean, it, it's an AK, right? It looks good. looks fine. But, I, I mean. That's the only one that's kind of in my price range. If I did want to get into one, seven fifty. Have you looked at going PSA for six hundred? <clears throat> I like buying local for some reason, just oh. because I just like to. Uh, it, so at that price so range, I would look for a Wasser or a PSA before I would get the VSKA. If you want a good AK that you know you would want to keep for a very long time and is not going to wear out. I honestly suggest you buy a parts kit, buy a barrel, and send it to somebody like M13 uh, Industry or Meridian, and I think it's M13 um, Industries uh, Meridian Rifle Dynamics. <laughs> they know what they're doing. Cool. Well, you know, you're talking about buying local. I mean, if you buy it and, and go through your, your local, you know, dealer, you're still going to end up paying a transfer fee. They're still going to make a little bit of money from it. They might be able to call up and negotiate a, a good price with their distributor. I don't think PSA does that. Isn't that a big thing about PSA? They don't sell the distributors directly. They don't sell the gun stores directly or they don't offer any kind of discounts or something like that. But, yeah. I mean, we know a guy that works over there, so we probably ask him. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, is uh, as far as so is it? <clears throat> sorry, 
I, I mean, AKs are iconic, but is it the the round that we're, you know that we're talking about the seventy six two by thirty nine? Mm-hmm. Shouldn't that, if we don't want an AK, what platform would that work in better? It right? won't. Like, it won't. Seven sixty two by thirty nine. I've got a I got a Ruger American Ranch seven sixty two by thirty nine, and uh, it's 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 a it's a one inch rifle at a hundred yards. I mean, sub with really good ammo. It shoots really really well. Yeah, um, Ruger Ranch is nice. The reason why I bought that, it's got the threads on the end if I want to put a suppressor on it. Um, also, it's an inexpensive round to shoot. I can shoot it all day. It's I wouldn't shoot, you know, full metal jacket for hunting, but I, I can get a relatively inexpensive Hornady SST tip 762 by 39 that steel steel case that I could hunt with if I wanted to. Um, and that's pretty it's like it's like 20 50 rounds for $23, which isn't bad for hunting grade ammunition. Um, yeah, for me, I buy bomb because it's dirt cheap. I have 40 rounds of Tula for 10 bucks, you know. Now, granted, I've switched over to Wolf, but still. And uh, if like you're saying is that round just would not work properly, um, it's the it's a, what, what people are trying to do <clears throat> is with the AK platform, they made the gun around the round. And what these people are trying to do, they're trying to make the round around the gun. And it does not work. So you're talking like an eight. You're talking a seven sixty two by thirty nine AR. Yes, it it, it it can it can. I mean, I don't know about long term durability because we've got a few gun channels fans that have made their own, you know, AR fifteen styles that run X thirty nine and uh, or by thirty nine, and they they do well, but they've taken some work. Um, you can buy uppers that are seven sixty two by thirty nine. I know Bear Creek sells one for two hundred bucks. Uh, a lot of times you have to swap out your firing pin because there's problems with that or a spring or whatnot. Yeah, but, I mean, um, if you want to buy an upper, you should be able to get that upper, slap it on, and take it to the range and go and have no problem. Yeah, but yeah. For me, the problem and, with this, look, if, if, the whole point of the AR, well, the whole point, part of the point of the AR platform is that it's very versatile and all this kind of stuff and modular and all that. And once you start getting into 7.62 by 39 for some reason, it just it, the, the, the guns just lose a lot of a lot of the appeal for the whole reason why you want to buy something like that i just you know if you if you want 762 by 39 you know my opinion uh go bolt action go ar or go sks um if you if you want an ar but you don't like 556 or 223 then get something in 300 blackout or something you know yeah um you know there, there are other other calibers that work well for that platform that platform and 762 by 39 just don't i mean they they, they no, can not. be made to work but it's too much work to get them to work and be reliable. Uh, proprietary magazines, you got to spend. Yeah, you know, it's just, not yeah. only that, it's, it's a potential, uh, you know, time bomb because they basically take material off of the bolt face of an AR platform. Uh, honestly, a 762 by 39 AR should actually be in an AR 10 system instead of an AR 15 system. And because they take so much material off the face of the bolt in order to accommodate the um, larger case. Um, uh, I'm blanking on the word here. Uh, basically, the case. Awesome. Yeah. That after, I, I don't know how many rounds, but after a round count, it creates micro cracks in the, um, in the bolt lugs. And that's very, very dangerous on any type of semi-automatic or automatic firearm. I was going to go with the uh, by 39 for an AR-10 build. And then I got a 308 rifle and my friend got a 308 rifle. So I decided to go with the 308 round. So that way when I start reloading, we can basically reload for three different rifles at one time almost. Hmm. But I, yeah. I would definitely go bolt action if that's the round that you want. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, if bolt you're not going to get an AK, do the, do, I would say the bolt action for sure. Yeah, I don't know very much about that. Very good. Very well. Yeah, I mean, it's hard telling. Um, and I would just say, you know, again, if you're going to go 762 by 39, just go the AK-47 route, just that platform and, and be happy. Um, so don't go yeah. mini 30. Yeah, stay away from the mini thirty. Yeah, man, if you want to spend nine hundred dollars, I mean, yeah. uh, here's the thing: um, don't go mini thirty. <laughs> if you want yeah. a very well put together AK, I honestly suggest you save up, buy a parts kit, buy a barrel, and send it to Meridian Meridian Defense Corporation. 
They have build service services there, and these people know exactly what they're doing. They make very, very nice rifles. Now, granted, you're still going to pay a little bit more than uh, what you would normally, but if you want one AK rifle and you want it to be built properly and correctly every single time, send it to Meridian. Now, granted, their, their parts kits start at $580 for just labor. So, you know, you have to pay for the parts kit. You have to pay for the barrel. And they can source their own things. But they definitely do a very good job with rifles. Hmm. I'm not endorsed by them. I really wish I was, but yeah, send it yes, to Meridian. Right, anyway. Don't lie. You know, you know like, <laughs> you're in the face. pocket of you're in the pocket of Big Meridian. Uh -huh. You know, now we're kind of kind of getting into the area where I think it's it's a lot of people maybe don't want to don't want to go that route. And when you start talking, you know, thousands of dollars and this and that. But but again, you know, like we've said before, if you want to go on the high end, look at your arsenals, look at your Vepers. Uh, you want to go five to seven hundred. You've got PSA. You've got you know, we could say Riley Defense. I mean, I, just what the feedback is, I'm seeing from the from the chat side over on the YouTube side. A few of you have them and seem to have good luck with them. Um, you know, if you really want the original experience in terms of the internals and stuff, you can go the pistol route because imported pistol route because you've got the unmodified internals. Uh, it's really hard turn to decide. I mean, with me, again, I was sold on the hype and the advertising. When it came to the AMD 63, what sold me on the AMD 63 was the price. Now, granted, I paid a $50 premium to go the James River Armory route. But, and again, I guess, honestly, if I had known it had a 4140 barrel, I probably wouldn't have bought it, but I was still learning about guns at that point. Didn't realize that 4140 and 4150 are a big deal uh, in terms of durability. They can be if you're kind of a mag dump person. Um, but it did have the forged trunnion and the internals and the properly made. You know, I, I thought here's a chance to get uh, get myself a commie, former commie block rifle for, you know, 550 bucks. Um, so that's why I bought the MD 63. Here, here's the deal with the 4140 and 4130 and 4150 steels for barrels is – I, I really don't know why people make a big stink over it when it really isn't. If you have a good coating on it, like a nitrided coating, it doesn't matter what the metal type is because that nitrided coating is going to essentially absorb all of the wear. And people go absolutely nuts over something that they really don't know anything about. Yeah. yeah the, the odds of you shooting out either barrel or slim to none in the mm -hmm. You okay? Let me put it this way: unless you're a competitive shooter that goes every single weekend to competitive shoots and shoots a thousand rounds each time, other than that, you will never wear out an AK barrel. I mean, wouldn't that go for pretty much anything, though? <laughs> Not just AK. Yeah, but the, the, the barrel wear is going to come. What we're talking about when you're talking barrel wear is the wear comes from the heat. Mm -hmm. You're heat. You're heating up the metal, which makes the metal more softer. Essentially, it makes it. Uh -huh. It weakens the metal temporarily when when the barrel gets hot. When the barrel reaches a certain temperature, it can it can it can potentially be damaged if it is con if you continue shooting it while it has reached a certain temperature because the the metal is a little bit unstable at that point. If you're the type of dude who goes out and shoots two to five hundred rounds once a month, your barrel's never going to get that hot. You're never going to get it hot enough to damage the barrel. Even if you mag dump four or five magazines, you're still not getting it hot enough no. in order to do damage. And and four or five and even and, and even if it was getting that hot, four or five magazines isn't enough to damage your barrel once it is hot. Yeah, so exactly. Not, Unless you have a fully automatic rifle, you're never going to damage your yeah. barrel if you're doing now that's, it. Now, that's not for me, as far as I'm concerned, because I talk about this with a, with ARs all the time. That's not to say that in today's day and age, when you can get a 4150 barrel, why not get a 4150 barrel? You know what I mean? Sure. So, so they, you know, I mean, if you get it, and get it. But that's not to say if you have one with a 4140 barrel that, oh, you've got a piece of shit. No, you don't. You've got a, you've got a good rifle that may, may, that the barrel steel may be slightly lesser than another barrel steel but it still works you know it, so it's it's not it it, 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 it yeah it, to me with with AKs it's not nearly as big of a deal as it was, is, is with ARs because with ARs there's there's no cost difference 
just get one with a 4150 barrel instead of 40. You look at you look at the prices of all these ARs out there on the market today. We talked about this last week. There's no excuse not to get a 4150 barrel at that point because they're all the same price. With yeah, AKs, yeah. maybe there is a little bit of a price difference. But here's here's the other thing. If you ever burn out your 4140 barrel on your AK, you can go to Atlantic Firearms and buy a 4150 barrel for about 80 bucks and swap it out and put a new barrel on there if you want. You know, if if it's that bad, you love if you love everything else about your rifle. But the barrel, for eighty bucks, you can get a brand new forty-one fifty nitride coated barrel. So it's 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 not it's and, not that expensive. And that's that's only with AR. AK is swapping out the barrel a little more time. Well, I know it's more. I understand it's more complicated, but yeah, it can be done. I'll, I'll just, just send I, it to you. I'll send it to you. And yeah, you can send it to AWAG. And then, well, again, like we're saying, for somebody who's going to be buying that first AK, we want to keep it as simple as possible and just try to give them some solid advice. And, screw that shit. Screw that shit. Just go 458 Silicon. You'll be all right. <laughs> 458 Silicon. There you Hey, man, whatever works for you. You know, you you do you, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to remember. Oh, there was somebody a few years ago for the M92 was actually selling nitrided barrels for the M92. They got a bunch of the um, Virgin Hugo barrels and nitrated all of them. Huh. Yeah, you can definitely take it where you want to. So, um, if you guys are out there in the the chat on the YouTube side or on the Gun Channel side, if you guys have any questions, uh, just go ahead and post them now about the AKs because we'll be moving on to a different uh, topic here shortly. But again, you know, hopefully, giving you some solid advice for different uh, AKs that you could look into. I've just got a quick little update on my my Bear Creek 300 Blackout AR15. I want to show you guys, but. Uh, check in the chat, see if anybody had any questions out there they were posting. A lot of you guys are giving a lot of good advice out there, which is good, too. Uh, oh, well, Travis, I actually get it. Yeah. Get off before I get in trouble. <laughs> but yeah, I appreciate it. Uh, oh, okay, no problem, man. Like I said, I will give you the invite sooner so you can join in. I, oh, well, I no, just, no, no. I wasn't yeah. on gun channels, and I was eating. Oh, no, comments, no. It's so. it's cool, man. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about I it. I appreciate the invite, though. Yeah, no Thanks. problem, man. Thanks for, Thanks for being here. Yeah, I appreciate it. Here's also uh, the thing with AKs. Uh, honestly, you will never wear out a barrel. But you're really never going to wear out a front trunnion and a bolt carrier group if you have one that's imported or actually hammer forged and done correctly. Because some of these, there is, um, I forget who it was, but they did a test where they essentially had to swap out a barrel uh, like six or seven times because they wore it out. It was just constant, like... Um, just fully automatic fire and the front trunnion had like almost no uh, no wear on the um, on the locking surfaces and the bolt was still well within spec so and also the trunnion the front trunnion is much harder than the barrel steel barrel steel is roughly 40-ish Rockwell hardness, give or take. For those of you who don't know, uh, Rockwell hardness is just essentially how hard the, the steel is. Uh, front trunnions are like 60 to 65 Rockwell hardness. And in comparison, um, barrels are like butter. Well, let's see. Any more questions popping up over there? On uh, AKs, if you want to understand why K-bolts have deformed tails, it's because the hammers need to be re reprofiled and polished. Yeah. Uh, you need to reprofile the AK hammers before you shoot the rifle to avoid the bolt carrier tails from deforming. Okay. Um, that's that's with current production uh, AKs. Yeah, what happens when you build one off of parts kit, which is why I like doing this, is because the bolt carrier groups are forged and hardened properly so that they don't do that your hammer is supposed to be softer than the bolt and carrier group and that's where some of these manufacturers go awry because they make their hammers harder than the bolt carrier groups because they you know it's honestly one of those things where you know the bolt carrier for an AR is much softer than the than the bolt itself because the bolt takes all the brunt of all the pressure, whereas the AK system is something that goes in unison with the bolt. You know, the bolt and carrier are something that are 
like in, intimately together. They're, you know, part of each other. So in order to to properly make an AK, everything has to be a balance. You know, the, the barrels have to be softer than the front trunnion. The front trunnion has to be uh, on par with the bolt. The bolt has to be pretty much on par with the carrier. The hammer has to be softer than the bolt and carrier, or you're going to have real problems. Now, what uh, what Warsaw Patriot said is Robski has failed to reprofile AK hammers multiple times in the past. Should that he have to, though? Should he have to? No, though? you should not have to. That's just it. Okay, I mean, it, it should it should run for thousands of rounds out of and the box, in my opinion, and Rob, not have any issues, you know? Yeah, Rob, this is kind of my feeling. Yeah, Robski intentionally doesn't reprofile them. He tries to keep them, as far as operating parts, as close to what they are when he gets them so he can put them through a proper test to see how they're going to hold up. He intentionally doesn't reprofile anything. Yes. That's the whole point. Uh, let's see. Question on this one. Any import VZ 58s? For a while, man, those were a really good deal, but now they're eight, $900 guns. And you do have proprietary magazines with those, right? The VZ 58? Yeah. The VZ 58s are yeah. proprietary. They're cool looking, man. I like them, but they, they've they really gone up in price. Again, a lot, anything that was, it's just, it just blows import, my mind how much AKs have gone up. The only imports of uh, VZ 58s are parts kits. Okay. Sorry to burst your bubble, guys, but only parts kits. So Matt had ducked out. Matt, thanks for joining us. We do have a comment from the uh, chat for you, Matt, if you're listening. They think that you need to start your gold Tiger Stripe 50 AE Eagle Fund or hard case finish 50 AE Eagle Fund. So that's going to be the next one. Now that you got the Sig Nightmare, you got to get yourself a Desert Eagle. <laughs> oh, man. Let's see what else we've seen. Any other questions you guys have at all before we move on at all? Let's see. Now, no, Horse Nut says, I still would reprofile a new AK Hammer. Like the Tapco G2s. Okay. You know, if that's going to reduce the, the wear and tear, not a bad idea. Because I know that yeah. I got a G2 in my AMD, and it's really done some pretty good work on the uh, on the bulk carrier group itself. It's really smacked it pretty good. See, that's, so maybe that's a bit of a problem that a person okay. needs to look into. Yeah. With the issue with the G2s is they're making them semi-automatic profiles. And the difference, and it's based off of a Romanian um, – profile hammer there's two different pro mm -hmm. uh, profiles there's your civilian and then there's the military what happens is all of these u.s manufacturers are making parts kits off of military spec rifles which means they have full auto cutouts in the bolt and carrier groups and also the the bolt carriers are supposed to be in that style but they're not hard enough so when you pull the trigger on a g2 it's the the hammer is just you know beating the crap out of the soft metal because this um semi-auto uh hammer has an extra like bulge at the top so that is not to uh interact with a um a hammer retarder or an auto sear if there's uh one in there and that's where you get most of your peening on the the tail and you, you really shouldn't have to do that. I honestly suggest you get a military spec trigger and hammer and just go with like an ALG spring, a high energy spring, and just leave it at that. You should be fine. Or I suggest just going straight with ALG's, um, what is it, their enhanced trigger that they yeah. have going on. Just yeah, get one of those. Those are nice triggers. Oh, yes, they are. Yeah, I've seen those popping up a little bit in the chat tonight, too. So, uh, and my case, the only AK I have has a Russian hammer in it. So. Warsaw <laughs> Patriot, thank you for bringing that up, though, because that is a very important point. We did mention, you know, when you start looking at differences in the hardness of the metal, the average person might not pay attention to it. And before you know it, you're going to have a worn out bolt within a couple thousand rounds. And you got something that, you know, you want to, uh, to last. Uh, yeah, yeah. And the only, the only AK I currently have is my shotgun, and that's got a Russian trigger and hammer. So. Now, a guy in the comments says, I assume VZ58 parts are not interchangeable with AKs either. AY, no, is there no, any no. part that's interchangeable no. at all? No, nothing? No. It says it's not an AK, no parts interchange. Yeah, the design, the style looks like it looks like an AK-47, same round, but that's pretty much about as far as it goes. So, yeah, because What's the Patriot? I do appreciate that feedback, though, buddy. What's that? The check... check army basically wanted to say screw you to um soviet russia at the time yeah yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, which is why if you look at the check weapons, they're all different. They use the same rounds, but they're not. None of them are exactly the same as what the Russians were. Because they're like, we're not using your stuff. We're going to build our own. Now, um, over here on the Gun Channel side, Fine Ape says, you need tougher steel, not harder. Hardness will increase wear resistance against other parts. Think of a ball bearing and a bearing as hardness increases, so we'll brew on this. That's a good point. Toughness will have more elasticity and will take shock much better. So he's got a very solid point on that. Yeah. So was this question based mostly on wanting to get a decent AK for the price instead of getting ripped off with a piece of junk? Or was the basis of this getting an AK before there could be a panic buy or before the prices go up again. When I got mine, I got it, I guess you'd call it on a panic buy. I bought it the summer before the election because I was convinced Hillary was going to win. And I wanted to get one before they were banned or the price went through the roof. I, it really wasn't on my radar. I don't hate the guns, but I'm really not an AK guy. Part of the reason I got it was so that uh, if my kids ever wanted one and these things were banned, at least dad's got one and they could yeah. shoot it. I really... And then so for me, some of the basis on, on my firearms purchase does have to do with my kids inheriting my guns or my grandkids maybe one day inheriting my guns or something like that, where it's for other people that's not even on their radar. So I went out, I pulled out the credit card, you guys know me, and I paid $750 for this gun. And I, right around that time, Matt was on a show and he was talking about spending 500 bucks for the, the same gun. And I, I kind of felt like I was getting ripped off, but there it was at my FFL. Just pull out the credit card, went home with it. Uh, one thing I don't always do right away with my guns is shoot them. I never buy a gun and go, oh, man, I just got to get this in a range. And I sat on it for three weeks before I, I even took it out and shot it, and I had problems mm -hmm. with it. I took it out a, a week later, shot it again. I had problems with it. I got a hold of Century, and they said, ship it to us. And uh, they had it for a few weeks. Their gunsmith did some work to it. They sent the gun back with a... Uh, with a report from the gunsmith explaining what he did, and then I ran everything I could find through it. Factory ammo, reloads, whatever it was, I ran everything to try to get it to fail again because it was at that time Century said, oh, by the way, you only have a one-year warranty on this, and it started on the date of purchase, not the date that you got it back from us. And I thought, well, man, I better try to break this thing just to make sure. Um, but... All of that I did just because I thought the election was going to swing one way or the other. Next year, we got some things to think about. So does any of the basis of the question have to do with, with that at all? No, the original question I got was, can you give any, Can you give me some advice on, Can you? what kind of advice can you give somebody buying their first AK or somebody looking into buying their second or third? Though these were questions that go all the way back to my 10,000 subscriber video, which was only like six months ago. This is post-election questions. And so right. just my experience that I ran into, what I've seen, what I've read, experiences you guys have all had with your ak-47s i thought you know we could probably give some solid advice on this one so if you are yeah. buying you know if you if you buy one ak platform yeah that's that's fine if you buy two that's you know that's okay too but as soon as you pass the threshold of three and four that amount of money that you spent on those can easily buy enough tools and knowledge to build five of them Mm, you got know, a good that's point a good there. point. A, that's a good yeah, point. Yeah. All right. So the questions look like they're drying up over there on the uh, both channels, on the gun gun channel side and the uh, YouTube side. So we're going to move on to the last little section here. We got about twenty some minutes before we got to call it. I want to be done. Give uh, Sarge or anybody else with the next time slot plenty of time to get into it. I want to give you guys an update. I'm trying to do this every couple weeks now on the uh, my Bear Creek Arsenal uh, 300 Blackout Air 15 pistol. Uh, I just got the SBA three brace on it today. I just think this thing looks awesome. We're running a uh, PSA uh, PA 15 lower in 300 blackout. And then the Bear Creek Arsenal upper 10 and a half inch with the UTG low profile sights. Brace is just awesome. This thing is just, <laughs> it's, I got the brace. Unfortunately, it was 118 bucks. Uh, got it through optics planet. That was about the best price I could find anywhere. Got it with uh, free shipping. And uh, I think it was 20, 10 or 20% off of it. But man, this thing is just extended out. It's just the right length. I mean, this is just awesome. Yeah, and, uh, nice, man. Yeah, she's coming out good. I put a lot of rounds through it, but I did take it apart and clean it after I shot it on that initial video that you guys saw. And uh, everything looks fine. I mean, I do want to run a lot more through it, but I need to start stocking up on ammo for it because I don't have a lot of ammunition for it. I bought all the ammo that Walmart had. Walmart had 100 rounds of American Eagle, uh, whatever, 150 grain or whatever I'm running through it. It's a pretty lightweight round that I bought, but it's all they had. 
And so I bought the hundred rounds that they had. I need to get a case of it. So I'm good to go. But so if you just wanted to go just with the upper, you're looking at 200, uh, 128 for the lower 328, not counting an FFL transfer fee or not counting, you know, the upgraded SIG brace, you can get an air pistol for, you know, 325, $350. And so right now we're probably looking at about 500 wrapped up in this gun. When you throw the SIG brace in there and, and the flip up sights and you can get yourself a good, you know, PSA 300 blackout pistol for 499. Um, the only reason why I went this route is I like the handguard better or the handguard. I thought it was going to get, I didn't want to go with the one PSA that they were selling because a lot of people are complaining about the handguard coming off. And so like sliding off or problems with the front of it, which PSA is addressing, but I just, I wanted to give these guys a try and I've got, uh, we my family's got multiple Bear Creek rifles. So yeah. Hey, joining us, we got uh, five fine apes over there, right? Fine ape, what's going on, man? How you doing? I'm doing okay. Enjoying my first, uh, First official snow day since probably about grade six. You too, huh? They called off school yesterday no, for us because it was, man, we got, we were supposed to get just, I mean, this, it was bad. This morning was really, really bad. We got probably six inches of snow, which isn't a lot, but it was like complete whiteout when I got up this morning to take the dog out to close down the interstate, basically between the center part of Nebraska out to where it splits to go off to Cheyenne, Wyoming and Denver because they didn't want to run into the multiple car pilot they had before. It wasn't cold. It was just big, wet, heavy flakes of snow, and yeah, um, yeah we got we got we got blasted pretty good last night. So yeah, Fox was oh, reporting that some areas out west got eight, up to eighteen inches. I mean, they got oh, it was yeah, the west and the, the storm itself was in like I know you guys maybe don't even know where Nebraska is, but like the upper two thirds, like north and western part of the state, was just dark blue on the weather map, which is heavy snow, which they don't need because they've been dealing with all the flooding and all that crap's going to melt. Maybe it'll get hot enough that some of the stuff can evaporate quicker than it did before because we're supposed to be in the 60s and 70s by then. So um, it was it was it's scary, though, because, I mean, I, we're safe where we are, but you never know if the rivers are going to back up and flood. And uh, Juice, quick question. It's 10 and a half inch barrel on this one. I went 10 and a half instead of eight and a half just because I wanted a little bit more velocity out of it. And I don't know, I just I was thinking about going eight and a half inch with this, but um, just decided to go this route. So. Yeah, nice thing is now, up. if I go 300, I can go shorter uppers if I want to because I'm already set up for it now, you know? Okay. You All right, guys. Money. I got to go clean out a spot in my garage so I can get my lathe up and going. Hopefully, I can knock out a, a, a Galil sometime this year. There you go, oh, buddy. That's a whole different conversation because the Galil is the ultimate AK. Awag, Awag, aren't you glad you joined us today? Because you were gonna, you were gonna just go clean that garage. I said, we're talking AKs. You need to be here. You have a responsibility yeah. to be on this show and back me up because I'm no AK expert. All right. <laughs> yeah, my my grandfather had a Galil. Those things are super nice. Oh yeah, it's the old. It's 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 the ultimate AK. It's the Ju K47. Yeah. Samson says, aren't you guys a little too old to be in grade school? No, Samson, you might not know, but I'm a teacher. So that's why I'm a high school teacher. So yeah, that's why I'm, I was, I had a snow day today. But for what it's worth, I spent half the morning writing final exams. So it wasn't like I had a vacation. I basically power slammed coffee and, uh, <laughs> and wrote up uh, three different levels of Spanish finals. So it was a pretty exciting morning for me and shoveled some snow. Yeah. Travis got held back in fourth grade for the past 30 years. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, well, you know, yeah, a lot of people say men don't grow up till they turn 30. So, you know. <laughs> Later, guys. Have a good one. All day. right. Take care, Wag. Have a good one, man. Have Later, a good one. Wag. See you, man. So are you going to put an optic on that, Travis? Yes. I, I've, got, I've got scopes for testing and benching and stuff. I've got a scope that I can put on anything that, that works with a pick rail or with Weaver. Um, I'm really just maybe thinking about either trying Hollow Sun or going with like a Romeo 5 or something like a SIG. I've got Vortex, and I've had good luck with it. I don't. I'm done going with, you know little cheap red dots and stuff like that. I've kind of played around with those enough, but I want something that's, this is going to be a travel gun. It's going to be a truck gun. It's, you know, it's a serious defensive weapon. So I want something that's going to be solid. It's going to run. Um, yeah, I'm going to put, I want something fairly compact in it because I don't want, I'm going to be taking a lot of stuff with me and we're going to be moving over the next kind of 12 months and stuff. And so I'll be hauling a lot of stuff. I don't have a lot of room for gun cases in my vehicle when we're moving. So I want something small. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm not mine. I got the, um, Primary arms. Uh, oh, the um, one-time uh, prism. The um, what do they call it? The cyclops. Should should I look into going? I heard a one to six is a nice way to go if you want to go this route, just because you you, you know you you got that zoom if you need it out to say two or three hundred yards, but at the same time, um, what do you guys think about that? Going slightly magnified with an optic instead of just straight up one power. I don't see why not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got but again, 
What's that? Advantage. If you got something, they can take advantage of it. I mean. Yeah. Yeah. But no, I've been pretty happy with it. I just want to get it back out again. I was gonna go, but like I said, we kind of got snowed out today. It'd be a mud pit right now if I was going to range. So yeah, so there's mm -hmm. the optic I got. It's just the one time it takes basically X just like you would have with a red dot, but it's got okay. the bullet drop compensation in there and everything. Okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. Yeah, I got that because my youngest has astigmatism, and they said that I have one too now. Even though I can red dots don't bother me, I can still make out the dot and everything. Mm -hmm. But I got this because she couldn't make up the dot to her was just one big blob. So, so it is it is not with that one or it is? Yeah, this is um, an etched reticle. It's not a red dot. Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, this is like a standard rifle scope. You know, they etch the reticles into the glass. Yes, That's how yeah. And then it illuminates from there. It doesn't do like what a red dot does. Oh, cool. That might be something to consider going with too. Go a little bit different route. Sweet man, but yeah, I mean, I've, I'm I'm happy with the build, and it's I get I'm gonna order a few more uh, mags and and stuff like that. I I am gonna just run the the mag pull 300 blackout mags, and I've mentioned this before that you can use your 556 five, magazines with 300 blackout. Um, the nice thing about the mag pull mags, let's kind of show them off to you guys again. They use a stronger tension spring in it because you've got a heavier round, you've got more brass and powder to push. So there's, there's more tension in this than a five, five, six magazine. I watched, um, Mr. Guns and gear did an awesome video. He literally took them both apart and showed the primary differences. There's some wider cutouts on the front and the back for different bullet designs that you don't get with five, five, six. And I think there might be some ribbing or something that's cut out of it from the inside, black followers instead of gray, little black bottom, different, um, texture on the mag itself. So, you know, you're not grabbing a standard P mag. And they're the same price. That's just it. I can get these online for like, I think they paid eleven dollars and fifteen cents for a couple of them. So uh, yeah, you know, this is decent. Uh, just Daniel said you have or going to put a light on that truck gun. Um, I had the uh, the O light and I sent it off to Midnight Range uh, to go ahead and and beat the heck out of that and run it. Yeah, I will put something compact on it. I don't want to maul ninja the truck gun too much, but it would definitely be a necessity to have a solid light on there at some, you know some way, shape, or form. Since I've got the M-Lock rail on there, it can mount on there, whatever I want. I want to go with something decent, though. You know, a good, a good truck light on there. So, you know, because, again, I could be in a situation where it could be dark. We're talking about doing 350-mile round trips. There's a lot that can go wrong in that time, that distance, even though I'm in, within civilization the whole time. But still. Um, but, yeah, no, I, I kind of wish they would do some 20-rounders. I don't know if they do a 20-round 300 blackout mag or not, but it would be cool if they would make them. And it says 762 by 35 on it. It says 300 BLK on the bottom. So, you know, you've got the right magazines because there's been times now <laughs> I'm sitting here kind of looking at it and thinking, I, I, I put 300 black on those mags, right? Yeah. It's, okay, good, good, good. So, you know, I don't want to blow my gun up. So it's kind of an important thing, but. Well, you could always use the uh, very high tech and newly innovative thing called tape. Oh yeah. Tape and rubber bands. Um, mm -hmm. After watching the the spring thing was kind of interesting though. If you slowly slide out. Your five, five, six rounds, you know, they, they lock and go to the next round. But if you do it with 300 blackout, there's a bit of a lag or a delay. Uh, that's what I saw in the video. And he was using brand new five, five, six Gen M3 P mags. And he put the 300 blackout rounds in and showed you the difference in it. And, and also the cutouts, because I might be running some subsonic. Um, I want the most reliable feeding I can get. Um, some point, I would like to put a can on this, although it's going to be hard with that handrail. And I might go with a shorter rail in the near future, like an eight and a half inch rail instead of the, the 10 that it currently has. So... But yeah, I've got the rubber bands. I've got the little rubber bands that are printed 556 five, and 300 blackout. So that's one way to go. Uh, so, guys, time for some QA. Throw it out there if you've got uh, anything you want to say. Um, and I've got uh, plenty of 556 five, brass. So maybe I can get into doing some reloading of 300 blackout too. Kind of, I don't know exactly. I want to get into reloading. I'm ready to go. So, Squib, I'm ready for us to sit down and start doing this. But with me moving and stuff, I don't know how much space I want to start taking up for everything that I'm going to have to pack up and move within the next, you know, 11 months. But there's a lot of reloading I could get done at the same time. So uh, I do want to get into that. So I know I could use my 556 five, press that I've saved in the past. Um, Dano says Olight has some very nice small and larger weapon lights. Yeah, Dano, I've tested two Olights on the channel so far. Had really good luck with them. I beat them up a little bit. I put them underwater, run them out. And uh, they do run really well. One of the Olights is actually on my wife's bedside gun, which is her Glock G17. It's the PL Mini 2 Valkyrie. And then I've got that Warrior X light that I sent off to Midnight Range. And he's uh, playing around with it. I, I let him have it. I said, here, go have some fun with it. 
And uh, mine, yeah, they seem to be decent for the money. You can get a good Olay for around a hundred dollars, but I know there's a lot, there's a ton of other great brands that are out there. Um, let's see. Andrew says I would put a visual marker on the 300 blackout mags. Yeah, probably not a bad idea. Um, I only have, you know, two 300 blackout mags right now. I need to get some more because I thought, oh, I can always use five, five, six if I want to. Um, Dano says I got the 1000 Lumen Valkyrie on mine. Yeah, that's, that's that. And, you know, being it's a truck and we're potentially looking at some like hiking or hauling or walking, you know, you could, you would definitely want some serious lumens uh, to light up what's in front of you because you might be in some very unilluminated areas, you know, not necessarily Q CQB stuff, but you know, if there's any kind of walking you'd have to do or any kind of a defensive situation, I'm always planning for a worst case scenario. So that's kind of what I think about, but uh chuck lux says travis first time looking at your show cool i like i'll be looking at it more yeah thanks for joining us man we've got 88 other episodes for you to go back and watch if you want to uh if you want to get a couple chuckles watch the first episode versus where we are right now so uh tomorrow's friday yes it is just daniel says i took the sbm3 in a carving class in october did just fine where am i moving to um i am moving to lincoln nebraska uh in a year my wife has a job that she got that has a six month probation with it. So, it, you know, if everything's good, everything's said, she will have the job for sure. But it was too much of a gamble for me to just walk away from a teaching job I've had for 19 years and a house and move and sell everything on a job that she doesn't know if she's going to like it. She loves it so far. It's what she went to college for. It's what she's trained to do. She absolutely loves what she's doing. But again, there's always the possibility that, you know, <laughs> So um, that's kind of why we're doing this in, in kind of a predictive, simple kind of way. But again, we, we we dated for two years before we got married. I did the Lincoln trips and she came out here and so on. So we'll be fine. We'll make it work. We've been married for oh, coming up on 15 years here in November. So uh, beard oil, good idea or bad idea. Dano, I use beard oil. My wife bought me beard oil and I kind of stared at it thinking, is this something I put in like a frying pan? You know, because the main ingredient in it's olive oil, um, but it does soften up the beard. It's not itchy or frizzly or crunchy. So it does give you a nice, nice, you know, nice, I'm very much pro beard oil. I'm all about it. You can always use CLP in a crunch if you need to, but you might smell like a cleaning bench if you do that. So your ballastol works really good too. So no, don't use ballastol. The second you start sweating, it'll start <laughs> stinking worse than anything ever. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Squibb sent me some ballastol. I kind of like the smell of it. So I might have to, I just might tell somebody it's like, it's, um, oh, what's it? Brute. It's the new Brute. Yeah. There you go. Stuff that came in the green bottle that your dad used to use. Yeah. Um, for that fresh minty smell. Yeah, there you go. There you go. If you just want it to be sheen, there you go. I think it does actually soften up the hair. It's a lot more manageable. I've got a little special little brush I use on it to kind of get it to kind of come into line and get into order. So yeah, beer talk. We can talk about beards next week if you guys want to. That'd be cool. So I don't know. Any of you guys contemplating or let's see. So Rich White, you said you've got the SBA three, right? Yeah. Yeah, I was just surprised with how easy it did actually go on and how nice the finish was on it. I just, I wish they weren't so expensive. It really bugs me because I complain about buying magpul stuff because I love it, but it is it, to me it's expensive for what you get. Um, yeah, you could put it on like you would a standard AR stock. Yeah, the, um, the SBA. No, I guess the SBA four doesn't do that, does it? The new one. Yeah, the SB. This um, I don't know how that one goes on. I haven't seen that no, one. I think yet. it says it'll fit on any mil, mil spec yeah. extension. Well, this one does. The problem is you can't put it on this way. You have to t you have to put it on the tube before you put the tube on the rifle or pistol, rather. So that makes it a little bit harder to get the tube on. You know, if you could put it on after the tube was on the pistol, it makes it easier. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, – and then, you know, they limit you. I, I measured it out. You get 12 inches of length of pull. So you get a foot for length of pull from the front of the trigger to the back of the stock. So Yeah, that's because the ATF limited it to a 13-inch length of pull on braces. Yep, so. yep. But I'm, I'm pretty impressed with the quality and stuff. It's solid. And, you know, the nice thing is now I have it. I can go with whatever, you know, upper I want feel like I can use it safely and use it, you know, the right way and, and you know, not too much, too much, too many issues with it. So Mel Danessa says, still going? Yeah, well, we're going two hours, bro. Uh, it's usually what we do. So, uh, let's see, we all know you like oh. ice. Oh, they're having a little discussion about cologne now. So, <laughs> oh, geez. Okay. Uh, beard oil. Good idea. Bad idea. Okay. Uh, you guys have any other questions? Now's the time to throw them out. Otherwise we're going to start wrapping some things up here. Um, so fine. Ape, you're joining us, man. What, uh, if somebody checks out your channel, what kind of content can they, can they expect to find? Or what do you do just to let people know about you? I do very little. Um, I don't know. Some good commentary, though. 
Well, it's easy to stand in the side and be a smart ass. I mean, <laughs> that's about my only that's marketable right. skill unless someone's looking for uh, voiceover work. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Uh, I just want to say I like I like that fashion statement that Robbie is sitting there finding. <laughs> that was the only I, thing I fed his head. Philadelphia cream cheese containers on the top. <laughs> you should swap it out every time, and it gives you an excuse to buy like yummy dips and stuff now. Just get like a guacamole one going on, and get a uh, got your cream cheese. Go get some pimento cheese spread going on there too. Well, I was going to use it as just going to use it as a form for a tinfoil hat, so the. Uh, Human brain waves will stay out of his uh, little uh, robot brain. So here, here's a comment. I mean, find eight, maybe, find eight, maybe you can comment on this one. Uh, so 300 blackout is to have AK performance in an AR platform. Uh, I think that was kind of the idea. It was something that would have a little more takedown, especially for mid-east combat. I mean, I was kind of reading about the history of it, but also designed to burn out of a shorter barrel for uh, close quarter combat. Uh, able yeah. to, to run suppressed out of a you know nine inch barrel or less right um yeah. something like that actually i do have someplace on my phone here i've got the um basically the why we're doing this brochure from uh, i think it was aac for mm, their honey okay. badger and that as to this is what we want to do and this is why we didn't use 762 by 39 in an ar platform well first First one was obviously that they have to machine out a bit of the bolt, which in theory and in fact does makes it structurally weaker. And that fact that 762 by 39, 310, 311 bullets, they're not exactly plentiful compared to 308 diameter projectiles like they are um, or, um, here in the U.S. Uh, where was that? Drop on it's not too bad. I think some of the Hornady rounds I was looking at, it's a 19 inch drop at 300 yards. And so, I mean, it's got a lot of potential. Um, I'm even almost kind of contemplating using this as a deer gun in the fall. Uh, if I get myself a nice, nice grade round on there, I've got five round magazines I could run with it. So, yeah. But again, for me, I just wanted to try 300 and never tried it before. And I, for short barrels, I'm not a big fan of 556. And I talked about this last week because of the, the visual report from it, kind of the loss of velocity and power. Going ten and a half versus sixteen. Not that a ten and a half is not going to get the job done, but um, I just wanted to go three hundred just because again the, the complete powder burn, more power, uh, and so on. Yeah, it makes a lot more sense in the uh, shorter like pistols or carbines than five five six does. Yeah, Jew says I'm glad I'm not into commie guns or I'd be even more broke. Yeah, yeah, it's I may mean, start getting into some of those Milserp guns. There's just so many of them out there you can get. Uh, let's see. We're having a vintage cologne discussion over on the YouTube side right now, talking about uh, jupe and cool water obsession. Come on, you guys know you are all CK1 fanatics. You don't have to deny it. <laughs> um, yeah. So, so uh, fine, Abe. Just since we're about ready to wrap it up here, any any solid advice you would give for somebody that is looking into buying an AK47, a first time buyer, or maybe somebody that bought one and hasn't had a good experience with it? What would what would? Because there one you could recommend that you think would just be a solid purchase. Just kind of off your experience or your knowledge. Um, no. Okay. I've looked at AKs, but they've just never really done much more done much for me. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. All righty, cool, cool. All right, guys, I think we'll go ahead and wrap it up. I want to thank everybody that's been on the panel for this evening. Give people a chance to get the next shows fired up. So, real quick, we'll go ahead and close it out. Uh, so let's see. Rich White was with was with us this evening. Uh, Rich, you want to say say anything before we call it? Um, check out this week on Loaded over on another media channel. Uh, that'll be Sunday night, eight Eastern. So we do okay. a little talk show over there on Sunday nights. Uh, Kingpin shows up um, for that one, so he'll be over there, and then usually get Gary over there. You know, get some Gary, nice strike, and snob. A bunch of us show up over there and just talk about whatever. Cool, cool. About two hours, two and a half hours sometimes. That's always a good time. <laughs> Lots of good stuff to chat about. So, yep. All right. So uh, so David Bowling, Kingpin, I, we probably got this idea planted in your head now that you need an AK. Is that what you're thinking about going with next? Well, it's, I need to find the AK-300 blackout pistol. Okay. Then, then I'll just be set. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if such a thing exists. I'm sure it does. There's probably somebody somewhere making I mean, if they make 243 and 270 AR-15... If you they know, got a micro Draco and 300 blackout. I'm there. I'm kind of it would be sweet. 
That would be yeah, absolutely another awesome. Cool <laughs> another cool one if they had it would be one in six five Grendel. Yeah, yeah. Uh, who knows? There might be some boutique manufacturers out there, so who knows? But uh, so David Bowling, thanks for joining us, man. Um, real quick on on the channel, anything fun coming up here? Uh, yeah, I'll have my uh, Henry rifles uh, video coming out within the next couple of days, and cool. uh, I, I don't know. I'm still having my internal conflict on whether or not I want to do any more of these gun reviews. Uh, I got a stack of stuff I haven't went through yet, mm. but I just I don't know. I just don't really think that they're going to be all that interesting. So. I'll probably okay. wait until I get something new. I don't know. We'll see. Okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. Well, guys, make sure you check out uh, Kingpin's channel. Very good stuff. Very good stuff. All right, man. I appreciate you being here. Thank you. All right. And uh, Forklift, a.k.a. Squib. Uh, all right, man. Anything you want to say before we call it? Uh, thanks for putting up with me being at work. And uh, and uh, thanks for the invite. And uh, I'll, I'll see all you guys tomorrow on... Uh, Budget Guns and Gear Review, uh, 7 p.m. Eastern for Right of the People. All right. Sounds good. Sounds good. Thanks, man. And last but not least, Fine Ape, anything, any any words of wisdom before we part? Anything you want to say before we call it? Well, if you feel like it, you can go over to Instagram and check me out there at Fine Ape 1393. Ooh. You'll see wonderful and crappy photos from Tulsa. Um, you can usually catch me on Midnight Range TMs, uh, the closer at about 930-ish. Plus or minus uh, five hours or so. <laughs> and uh, remember to feed your robots. Always, always feed the robots. Here we go. Let's see Robbie do it. Dude, I had one of those. I think we all had one of those when we were little. Those are just freaking awesome. And now I can have one if I go into eBay. So there we go. Uh, all right. So finally, uh, joining us again over on the uh, Gun Channel side, we had Fine Ape over there. I think Muscle Dog Mafia might have chimed in. Paper Plane Crash was over there. Uh, let's see, David, I think you were over there too. Let's see. So guys, thanks for watching. And over on the YouTube side, let's see. Midnight range was with us. Hooligan outdoors was out there. The juice, Jason Stewart, tacos and French fries, blue steel 44. I might just do that. Looking at your suggestion on the, on the chat there, uh, tacos and French fries and Andrew Faulkner, Rob D New York outcast in the house as always Scott P 79, Tim 18 wheels with us. Also rolling trip was with us too. Um, rolling trip. That's interesting. What you said about dropping deer like that. I know I'm considering going with a longer barrel too. Uh, let's see here. Anybody else going in there? Guy that comments also joined in, and I remember seeing uh, John Z out there too, if I'm not mistaken. And I think that's pretty much it. Just Dano, Chuck of Luck joining us. Thanks guys for being here tonight. Kind of just scanning it. Bass Boy nine nine zero nine one in the house. Samson one was with us. Glimtech Arms. Sean Pondery, Voltron Defender of the Universe. And hopefully I didn't miss anybody. So, and if I did, I apologize, guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, uh, Y'all have yourselves a great night. We will see you guys next week. What's up? I just want to know which Voltron it is. Is it the Lion Voltron or the Vehicle Voltron? Uh, you know, I don't know. It could be. It could be all the lions. It's hard telling. It. <laughs> <laughs> but they form together to become one. Yes. All right. Cool. Cool. All right. So thanks for joining us, guys. This has been Caliber Corner episode number eighty nine. Hopefully, we gave you some advice for buying that first or next AK. If anything, we gave you some definitive answers for places you can start, things to look at. As always, do your own research. Ask around. Go to your local gun shop, guys. Make sure you support GunChannels.com. Do get over there and sign up for a membership, and make sure you guys support GunTube.org. They're also over on Patreon, so. Give them a little bit of love. And so for you guys that were on the panel and those of you that left uh, have taken off before we finish, thanks for being here, guys. Episode 89, and we are out. Bye, Alicia. Bye. And in Espanol, adios, Felicia.